I'm not, I'm muted still, whoops. Sorry, I'm not muted now. Haha, <laughs> there's a flashing button here that tells me when I'm muted. I swore I hit it, but I am not muted now, right? OBS is seeing my mic, so that's good. Yay, so let me start over again. Yay, hey, it's Lou Dolphin here on Handelabra Games. <laughs> I was gonna say hi to Evil Dice Monkey, uh, who is the only person who is chatting right now, but maybe more people will file in as the evening proceeds. Um, but we should probably, you know, get around to the, you know, what we came here to do and play this brilliant card game called Magic the Gathering. No, Sentinels the Multiverse, of course. Uh, let's see, where's my spiel? Here it is. You're watching Handelabra Games. You're actually watching, well, it is Handelabra Games, but you're in particular watching Dolphin's Dive, hosted by Lou Dolphin. I'm here by myself tonight, doing a solo, uh, stream. Hopefully it's as engaging and entertaining as last week's was. Um, I don't know if we're going to have as epic of a match as we did against the Ultimate Chairman, but at the very least I hope to be able to provide some insight and strategies into this beloved game, as well as, you know, make things entertaining to watch and interesting. Uh, Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against that goal is not welcome and will not be tolerated. You'll probably note that I have a sword next to my name and I know how to use it. You can follow us at Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and Handelabra Games right here on Twitch. If you want to follow me individually, uh, my Twitch account is LewDolphin, my Twitter is at LewDolphin21. My YouTube, you can search for Loot Dolphin and I'll almost certainly pop up. You can also, if you want the URL, type in like slash user slash Saperogo, uh, S-A-P-E-R-O-G-O. -E uh, that is a very old name that I went by before I went to Loot Dolphin. Unfortunately, YouTube has not, in, has not invoked a URL switch, so I'm not able to get to Loot Dolphin, but my channel is titled Loot Dolphin there. Uh, you're right, I do not punch with swords, but I am a dolphin, so I guess ha the ability to punch is epic in of itself. Sentinels of the Multiverse is currently available for iOS, Android, and PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam, and always via good old analog cardboard and ink. You can get the game and more info at sentinelsdigital.com. Not .org, not .edu, not dot .what's some other ones? .info? I don't know. Some foreign ones like .eu or something. I've... I don't know. What do I look like, an expert? I should probably put on like a lab suit or something so I can look like a scientist and like I'm gonna concoct some excellent games and strategery. Uh, or I could just wear this casual setup that I always just wear. All right, so since it's solo, we're gonna be playing a solo game and um, I do have a particular game planned. It's not actually 100% planned. I'm going to be playing against La Capitan, uh, partly because I'm not... <laughs> She's one of my least favorite villains, partly because the first time I played her, I got wrecked supremely. Um, but I hope to be able to figure out some good strategies against her. It's not just a learning experience for you, of course. Uh, the team I'm going to be using will be Super Scientific Tachyon, Skyscraper, and Prime Warden's Captain Cosmic. We're doing a three hero team. These were ra randomly selected when I first played it. It seemed like a fun match, so I'm going to go ahead and play it again on stream. And the environment is Mobile Defense Platform. Uh, there don't seem to be as many chatters today, that's fine. Uh, hopefully people will file in or something as we get in later. I would ask for difficulty, but I'm just gonna play with standard today. My plan- my goal with these streams, uh, first game will probably be something predetermined, so that we at least have some exciting interactions and whatnot. The second game will be viewer's choice, and I'll put that vote up to the chat. Uh, certainly with enough warning, so I'm not just sitting here waiting 30 seconds for someone to vote. And the third game will just be, I will hit the randomize button in the lower right corner and just, you know, <laughs> play with whatever I'm given. And things could become fun and exciting that way. Hello, Boomy. We have a second viewer. And a third one, Elemental Fugue. Hello. Um, so let's just start this game that we have right here. So I apologize for my Spanish. Ahoy, niños! 
I don't know a Spanish accent. I also don't know how to speak female, so. Hand over all of your valuables or get thrown overboard. A quandary! Time for some scientific action! Or if she were to say it, it would probably be like, a quandary! Time for some scientific action! You know, because she has to say it twice as fast. Or something, because it's tachyon. Alrighty, so ta Super Scientific Tachyon starts with a hypersonic assault, a light speed barrage, a research grant, and a sucker punch, the best card in the game. Skyscraper starts with an aggression modulator, an explosive reveal, a rest and recover, and a Therathian monolith. She so she can't really get tiny just yet. And Prime Warden's Captain Cosmic has an autonomous blade, a cosmic crust, a dynamic siphon, and a vitality conduit. Lots of constructs. So La Capitan, let's read her card. She is the villain, Time Corsair. Setup. At the start of the game, La Capitan enters play, Time Corsair side up. La Paradoja Magnifica is put into play, the villain deck is shuffled. Gameplay. At the start of the villain turn, if there are three or more cards under this card, La Capitan flips. Whenever a hero card is destroyed by a villain card, it is placed under this card. At the end of the villain turn, La Capitan deals the hero target with the highest HP to projectile damage. So if you've not played her before, she has a lot of card destruction in her deck. Uh, a lot of ongoing and equipment destruction, but a lot of targets that like to target things, of course. She has her ship, La Paradoja Magnifica, Relic Time Ship. At the end of the villain turn, play the top card of the villain deck. At the start of the villain turn, shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck. So this card plays extra cards, and every villain becomes more difficult with extra card plays, of course. This is a target with 15 hit points, so it's rather difficult to dispatch with. But if we can destroy it, we'll get fewer card plays. And it also shuffles the villain trash into the villain deck at the start of the villain turn, so you can't really manipulate her deck as well when this card is out, as well as, you know, you'll see whatever you destroyed potentially come back, like Maria Elena's Revenge. Alright, well, might as well just hit start game so we can start our, ino not inaugural, why do you want to say inaugural on the stream? Jeez, we'll start our first of at least two games, hopefully. And her first card play, a Motley Crew. One shot, shuffle the villain trash, and reveal cards from the top until one crew cards, this card doesn't update for plurality, are revealed. Put them into play, put the other revealed cards back into the villain trash, and then play the top card of the villain deck, because what good are two card plays when I can play three cards? Uh, there's no cards in the villain trash though, so it did nothing. And we get plunder, which, I'm not going to bother reading all of these cards out. I don't think it's particularly exciting. But it's going to destroy nothing because there are no cards in play. And no HP will be recovered. So this is a rather boring turn. But wait. There's more. We have another card play. And it's, huh, Maria Elena's Revenge. So whenever we destroy a villain target, Capitan retaliates. Hello, Lord Flashfire. You didn't know you couldn't chat on the computer. Inaugural is correct, marking the beginning of an institution, activity, or period of office. Well, John told me last week that <laughs> Inaugural was like the first annual event, so I guess John was wrong. What did you do, John? <laughs> Are we going to do the Skyscraper and Captain Cosmic combo like Candelabra pulled out last week? I don't remember what that combo was, but we shall see, of course. All right, well, we have some exciting cards here with Tachyon, a Sucker Punch that can destroy nothing, a Research Grant, which is less exciting than her base power. Super Scientific Tachyon's base power is awesome. And these three heroes really synergize well with it, from what I've seen. We have a Light Speed Barrage, which is an amazing damage dealing card that is gonna do a whopping zero damage right now. And a Hypersonic Assault, which can deal damage and would stop damage from being dealt, but I sort of want to hold on to it. So the first thing I'm going to do in this game is not play a card. This wonderful strategic stream, and I'm choosing not to do things. Isn't that great? Well, I'm, I can still experiment. And by experiment, I don't mean... Uh, uh, lewd things, I suppose I should state. I shouldn't go into more detail than it. This is a family-friendly stream. So, let's see. Um, well, Tachyon didn't get any exciting card plays just yet, so let's experiment on Tachyon. We get a one-shot and equipment limited. Rip. 
and we get a fleet of foot. Yes, last week was the inaugural stream. Today's game is the inaugural game of this stream. I don't know why I keep doing the finger thing. That's not a good thing. I gotta punch more. We're gonna do punching. Punch, punch, punch. All right. So, Skyscrapers, wonderful, exciting cards. We can play a card on a non-existent environment target. We can destroy no link cards and deal no damage. We can regain HP and move nothing from our, our trash to our hand, but we can draw a card. Or we could become a monolith and reduce damage dealt to Skyscraper. I'm going to refuse to play this card game. I'm going to skip this. Uh, I could become a monolith and deal damage, but one of the strategies I like to employ with Skyscraper, since her tiny form loves having links in hand and her normal involves drawing a lot of cards, I like to get cards. So it's a card game, so let's get lots of cards. So Skyscraper gets a rebounding debilitator, oh, another rest and recover, and a compulsion canister. Interesting. I am lewd things? No, I am lewd dolphin. Is this lewd dolphin? No, this is Patrick. <laughs> Alright, Prime Warden's Captain Cosmic, you should do something exciting, I think. Let's see, Autonomous Blade deals damage uh, when damage is dealt. <laughs> that sort of sounds oxymoronic, but it actually makes sense. Cosmic Crest makes things immune to energy. I don't think there's really much in the way of energy damage at the moment. Not even much in the way of constructs are getting HP just yet. Dynamic Siphon, which is a really fun and exciting card. And Vitality Conduit, which is slightly less exciting, but good for keeping people alive. Also, I think I, re I recall now what the Skyscraper and Cosmic combo was, which was probably to increase Skyscraper's sonic damage by one, become huge, ping all the heroes for one sonic damage, trigger all of these constructs, get lots of things, do all the things, yes. All right, well, I think Dynamic Siphon is probably the best card of this bunch, and I'm gonna stick this on Tachyon, because what fun is experimenting when you want to? Um, and then his base power, which is different than standard Cosmic's power, and criticized by many. Until the start of your next turn, whenever a construct is destroyed, you may shuffle it into your deck and either draw or play a card. So this does work really well, actually, when constructs get destroyed. Cosmic can do lots of things, and once this power has been activated, he can do things like destroy all of his constructs, and each time a construct is destroyed, he can do extra things. Um, and the other thing that's exciting about this, and I discovered, was if Capitan, or rather, a villain card destroys a construct, like, by damage, Cosmic can say, you're not going into your deck, or you're not going underneath Capitan. I'm going to shuffle it into my deck instead, hee <laughs> hee. But we're going to go ahead and use it because I might as well. There is a construct in play. Cosmic draws an autonomous blade. Agent Panic is here! Oh my gosh, Agent Panic is here! I'm panicking so hard right now! Ah! Battalion Blade. This is going to be hitting a skyscraper. Mobile Defense Platform seems to have, like, not much damage potential, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, Motley Crew is, again, not going to get crews because there were none in the trash. And then Walk the Plank uh, is unfortunately going to stop Skyscraper from doing things. And the extra card play is another Walk the Plank. So what fun is a card game if I can't use powers, right? Well, Skyscraper's tied for the highest. But I'm going to stop her from doing powers because she still can't use powers. What do I think of the new cards shown from Stuntman and Benchmark? Um, I've actually, I'm, a, I'm actually a playtester technically. I don't actually playtest that much, but I have seen the cards for a long time, so I don't think I'm really uh, li liable, able, something to state what I think of those cards. They look exciting. They're fun. I can't wait to be able to play those heroes like publicly and stuff. They seem fun. Alrighty. Uh, we do have a fleet of foot, so that's probably the first card play. We get an accelerated assault, a linking incursion, and an augmented ally. I like to call this card for some reason, and I don't know why. I like to call this card augmented alley. Fun fact. 
I did that in one of my one-shot videos, and every single time I read that card, I kept saying Augmented Ellie, and it stuck for some reason. Alrighty. We have an extra card play. Well, I guess Accelerated Assault is fine. I want to sort of hold on to the Hypersonic Assault for when there's like a bunch of crews out. And this has been a rather crew-free game so far. Which is interesting, because I feel like whenever I play Capitan, there's always like six or seven crews that end up out, and I'm not able to deal with them all. But this time, that she's just like, not, she's only played one shots, and then that one ongoing. But we'll put the Accelerated Assault in play, so we can at least do our first blood, and then get bursts in our trash. And... Skyscraper can't use powers, but we can play cards, or put cards into play. Like, one of the things I like to do is super scientific tech, and I'm not sure that is, you know, the best approach. But I like to just cycle through all the heroes. So I did Tachyon last turn, so Skyscraper is next. It's just something I like to do. We get a Colossal Left Hook and an Undetectable Relinking. So the Colossal Left Hook, she could play a card after this if she discards a card, and an undetectable relinking, which is a little unfortunate because there are no links in play, but would let her play links or tinies. So a potential thought is to get that compulsion canister out so that I can return it to hand and then play it again. So I, for that, I got to do the colossal left hook first. And that ship has to go. That ship has to go. That ship has sailed. And I gotta discard something. And you don't really want to discard Rest and Recover because Rest and Recover is the only card that Rest and Recover cannot pull from the trash. I think. The links are a little better to put in there. And that Aggression Modulator is only good for reducing damage to hero targets because the environment doesn't like to hit villains. I think. Uh, rebounding Debilitator, when it would deal three or more damage, prevent that damage. Well, I'll just do the Modulator, because I can. And we shall play the Compulsion Dynasty! So what I could do, if I really wanted to, is put the canister on the Dynamic Siphon. So here's a pop quiz, guys! Oh my gosh, are we in school again? If I do this, what will happen? A. Super Scientific Tachyon gets to use a power. B. We get to experiment on a second hero. C. She can't do anything because she has no other powers. <laughs> the answer is, of course, nothing because we're still on Tachyon's turn and we've already used Experiment this turn. So that would be rather boring. But we can at least put the canister on Capitan. So she hits herself and we can have it hit the ship. Have her hit the ship. She's not an it. She's not an object. She's a person. And I shall return the canister to hand so that I can... Hmm. Play the canister. That's what I want to do. I was thinking of doing Linking Incursion, but... We'll play the canister. Because what fun is doing a canister once when I can do a canister twice? And Tachyon draws a Nimble Strike. So we still don't have much in the way of being able to play extra cards from her, but we do have some good hands going. Alright, Skyscraper cannot use powers, remember? If you can't remember, we have this wonderful notification here, and then the one right below it, in case you missed that one. In case, for some reason, when you open this, you only read every other line. Um... But we can't use powers, so... I could just play, like... I could play Explosive Reveal, and then deal two, da two and two damage to the ship. Would Cosmic be able to do anything? I don't think he can. But I could Linking Incursion and maybe get two links that would do damage, maybe? Um, don't need to Monolith just yet. Don't need to rest and recover. Yeah, I'm just gonna Linking Incursion because I can. We get another Compulsion Canister! Yay! What What's better than one canister is two canisters. I guess I could have done this one on the Dynamic Siphon, and we could have ex experimented. Hmm. Hmm. We do have Maria, Maria Elena's Revenge out still, so I probably 
Should be a little careful about keeping the dynamic siphon in play. Uh, let's see. Rebounding Debilitator? Sure, why not? She can deal that much damage, right? Skyscraper draws a Tectonic Choke Slam! Which is another card that combos well with constructs that do effects. <laughs> Where's Pike Dolphin? We were gonna have Chairman Pike co-star today? Well, uh, it turns out he's busy. When I asked why, he just laughed. <laughs> you silly being, you wouldn't understand. All right, Augmented Ally, I found is really good with Skyscraper because we can change her size and still use like two powers in a turn. So I'm gonna Ally, <laughs> Skyscraper, and then Absorption. And we get another Augmented Ally. And we get another Battalion Brute. I'm feeling like there's a lot of deja vu going on right now. The order, well, the choice doesn't matter because the second one's going to hit the other one. So not much choice there. So now Capitan is uh, stopping powers from being used yet again. Uh, I do want to be able to experiment, though. Oh, we do have Rebounding Debilitator. Yes! This is perfect. Yay! So much for walking the plank. Do I want to destroy this card or put it on top of her deck? That is an interesting choice. Uh, if I put it in the trash, we can draw it more easily with her tiny power. Um, but we probably want to get the canisters back for that. Do we have her tiny card that... No, we don't. Uh, if I put it on top of her deck, she's going to draw it. But then... Yeah, we'll just destroy it because we can get it back with her power anyway. Doesn't matter. Uh, sure, Tachyon is higher. Ship plays Plunder, which is actually going to destroy something, right? Or is there something in play? There is something in play. Oh, well, there goes the canister. And it's put underneath her because of her front text. So still no crew. You know, it's round three. No crew. So much for that motley crew. This ship is rather deserted. One might say it's a ghost ship. Hmm. Well, if I anticipate destroying the ship, I'm going to probably need to use hypersonic assault. Uh, and it would stop the brutes from dealing damage, so I guess that is overall useful. Alrighty, and let's experiment. We experimented on Skyscraper last time, so now Cosmic gets in on the action. We have two, not one, but two Conservation of Energies. Destroy any number of constructs. You may either draw X or play X, where X is the number of constructs destroyed, plus one. We don't have a choice, so we might as well put it one into play. Now we do have these two awesome, amazing cards, and I do want to keep them in play, I think. I mean, I could destroy one and draw a card. Like, I could destroy Augmented Ally and then get it back into play by playing Augmented Ally, plus another random card. Um, I don't really want to destroy Dynamic Siphon, even though it's not been used yet. But I'll go ahead and destroy Augmented Ally, because we do have Absorption active right now, so I can shuffle it into his trash. I can draw a card, like a destructive response, and I want to keep that. And now I shall play two cards. So I can get that destructive response in play. Um, although I'm not really going to be able to destroy another construct, but I can... I don't know, I could play something just to destroy it, I suppose. So I could combo more. So I'll put the autonomous blade out. I'll put it on the dynamic siphon, because how often do you augment, or not augment, construct a construct? That's not really a verb that makes sense. I like to spread out the hurt among everyone, Kami. <laughs> All right, let's destroy this card I just put into play. And 
Um, oh, I would love to destructive response and hit the dynamic siphon, but oh well. I can still hit the Capitan, I can still hit the ship, and I can whittle down that brute. Am I going to make Skyscraper huge? That's an important question. I guess I could. Uh, so I'll just hit the brute with higher HP. I'll shuffle it into my trash and draw a card like a cosmic weapon. I don't want to destroy that. I could draw two or play two, and I could do cosmic weapon. Um, yeah. I shall play two, because I do need to get that augmented ally back on Skyscraper. And that cosmic weapon. Who wants it? Cosmic can't use powers. I guess if Dynamic Siphon gets hit more than once in a turn, Tachyon could do more things. So we'll put it on Tachyon. Tachyon draws another Sucker Punch. Because what good is one Sucker Punch? I'd rather punch while punching. Uh, does Cosmic have Augmented Friend 2? No. He does not. That is one that he could get. And then he could activate Absorption before his card play. Which is super useful. Because he could play those destruction cards and have comboing effects. But I already utilized that in this game. Uh, not that I can't use it more than once. Let's see. Discard something. I guess... Let's see. Well, if I'm going to use the tiny power, I want to be able to have a link to play. So I guess I'll lose the explosive reveal. I shall play my only link on Capitan. And do I want to get the things from my trash back? I think I want to get that canister back. Canister? I hardly know her. Alright, so I've already used my tiny power, so if I want to use a another power, I need to become normal or huge. I think I said I was going to become huge. Tectonic Choke Slam! Uh, this, if I do it on this, the ship will get destroyed. But if I do it on Capitan, the ship will be down to two. And we don't have damage dealing here. But we do have an experiment that's potentially going to happen. Or no, not even an experiment. We have a cosmic weapon. That would destroy the ship for sure. All right, let's hit Capitan. I'm thinking ahead. Vastly ahead. We'll hit the evil things. Like the ship. And the brutes. It doesn't really matter though, they're gonna get destroyed. We shall hit the dynamic siphon, because now Tachyon can swing her sword at the ship. We. And then nothing else reacts. One day Dolphin might have to tackle Five Nemesis versus Iron Legacy. That could happen today! Second game is viewer's choice. Be, sur be sure to stay tuned for when I put in the poll for what my second game should be. Let's go ahead and clap. Oh, I guess that's not the clap we wanted to do. Okay. Ship's destroyed. Capitan can't get her revenge. Environment cards are cleaned. So there's really not much going on right now. There's no cruise. There's only one ongoing card. Ship's gone. Proportionist. Good card. Alrighty. Um, the first time that target deals damage each turn, this card deals one target, two energy damage. Or be immune to energy damage, or HP recovery. I think we want more in the way of damage. The question is who's the most likely to deal damage Tachyon does her, have her uh, cosmic weapon and a bunch of damage dealers. Skyscraper, if she remains huge, she will remain huge with augmented ally and use that huge power at least, so I guess I'll throw it on Skyscraper. Cosmic could deal damage with destructive response, but... Uh, oh, I thought... Oh, right! Cosmic can use powers, because that didn't actually trigger. Never mind. Never mind. I remember now. I thought the walk the plank hit cosmic, but we just stopped that damage from happening, if you recall. Harsh offense. <laughs> you vote that I play bottom of the ninth as my next game. I've never played bottom of the ninth. 
Birth level. When this card enters play, destroy any other level cards. The first time a target enters play, each turn play the top card of the environment deck. So we could see an environment play right now. Do 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 do. Yep, yeah, we got our first crew of the game. So birth plays a bridge, which destroys the birth. So that was an exciting birth. Copy town can't deal damage. One of these will get destroyed. Um, unfortunately, this is energy damage. So had I put out the um, Cosmic Crest, Battle Forged would have done nothing. But something is going to get destroyed. So what do I want to lose for that? The, I want to probably keep the power ones. So let's lose the Cosmic Weapon. And a lot of things triggering right now. But, let's have the destructive response go off, I think. Wait, do I want to play something to first? Nah. Let's destructive response. So I can hit Capitan. I can hit the Battle Forged. And I can hit the Dynamic Siphon! Woo! Tachyon here! You don't have your sword anymore, but you can put two cards into play. So last experiment was on Cosmic. I think. That was forever ago. Let's experiment on Tachyon. Yay! I like cards. Let's destroy the revenge so that we don't have to keep being dealt damage. And then let's play Sonic the Hedgehog. Do 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 Okay, how many bursts do we have left? We have three bursts. One one more target, two hits. So I could destroy one of these for funsies. Uh, don't think it's really worth it though. I could hit the the cosmic weapon here. Be even deader. Negative three hit points. Super exciting. Let's have cosmic shuffle it into his deck. That means that Capitan can't steal it. Battleforged triggers though. We're getting two crews, and we're destroying something. So, the Mabel is here, and the Siege Breaker is here. Alright, there are the crews. They've been here this entire game. Uh, I want to keep that destructive response, so I think we're going to lose the Debilitator. Do I want to play or draw? Well, I have to somehow take out Mabel. Somehow. So I might want to play that harsh offense, so that I could potentially take her out. So let's do that. Hopefully we reveal three constructs. We reveal... Two. Womp. So Mabel is going to destroy the other ongoing card. Uh, no way to avoid that. But Skyscraper will be able to destroy her at least, which is good. Still no extra card plays for Tachyon. This is annoying. Oh, I can Sucker Punch Mabel. Hmm. Not really super exciting, though, because Skyscraper will use her huge power. Hmm. If we put out the Cosmic Crest, Battleforged is not going to do anything. Siege Breaker will do things, but he has damage reduction, so I can't really do much to stop him from doing that. Uh, I might want to just Nimble Strike and try to get more cards. Capitan will be flipping, by the way. There's a quick insight. We last experimented on Tachyon, so let's experiment on Skyscraper. We got two links! Well, the Aggression Modulator, there's no environment card. The Cortex Hyper Stimulator, on the other hand... Uh, can be useful on Capitan, I think. Maybe. Possibly. And we get a research grant. Still no extra card plays. Discard a card to use a power, and... Yeah. I'm gonna lose the, mo the monolith. As, as awesome as it is, I do actually want to be able to hit hero targets. Uh, and this will destroy Mabel. Oh, right, Autonomous Blade is going off. Let's just wail on Capitan. I don't really want to waste the damage anywhere else right now. 
One of the fun things about Sentinels is that you don't need to destroy every single target that's in the game. You could just destroy the main villain and win the game. And destroying the main villain destroys all the sub-targets, so it's useful. <laughs> I think maybe, possibly, there's a chance that, uh, potentially, I could inevitably consider the thought of entertaining the belief that we can do things. <laughs> I like to stumble over my words. Um, doo -doo -doo. I would love to play that canister, but I also want to be able to use a different power. I can rest and recover and get whatever I want from my trash, right? Draw one card, move one card. That gets me cards and makes me normal so I can draw more cards. Uh... Yes. Get a hit point, get a card, draw any card, as long as it's not rest and recover. And that tectonic choke slam was pretty good. And let's get more cards. Like a proportionist, and a neutralizing resonator, and a micro assembler, which Tachyon will like. Okay. Cosmic Crest. And absorption, I think. And an autonomous blade. Not too many exciting card plays just yet, but we did have a fun turn. The battalion mechanic, which is not doing much. And then Capitan is flipped. HP recovery. And more crews. Like Mabel's return. And then a plank, which is going to go off. So someone's not going to use a power. So I guess that candidate is cosmic. And then, who's considered to have the lowest HP? I could destroy the mechanic, but then we'll get an extra villain card play. So let's just hit the siphon because it's immune to energy. get a random card into our trash um, one of these is a compulsion canister I don't remember which one though so what door should I pick one or three I don't know the order of these cards we can make this like Monty Hall you can choose any one of these doors and then I'm gonna open the other one and reveal a goat would you like to switch your choice? And the answer is yes. Two thirds of the time, if you switch your choice, you get the car. Take the box. I will take what's behind door number three. Door number three is not the uh, thingy mabobber. We also lost the thingy mabobber that did the thing. The yeah, words. All right. Well, Mabel's back, and we don't have much in the way of damage really. Um, well, we do have a choke slam still. Yeah, choke slam and yeah. Okay. Well, let's get a quick insight here. Like a hypersonic assault and a synaptic interruption and a blinding speed. So as much as I want to like play sucker punch and actually use sucker punch, I don't think I need them as much. We'll get more bursts. Who did I last experiment on? It was Skyscraper, right? So let's do Cosmic. Discards! And we get a Synaptic Interruption. Curses! Foiled again! I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. And your dog, too! Um... Yeah, I'm gonna ditch one of those Proportionists. To draw two cards, like a Therathian Monolith and an Undetectable Relinking. Unfortunately, there are no links in play. But I want to Choke Slam. Mabel's immune to melee. That was probably something I should have considered. But that's okay. Um, I could hit Capitan, but that's sort of a waste of damage. So instead... I'm just going to go up to the Battle Forged. 
Energy damage will hit Mabel. And then pings. So let's hit Capitan. Let's get that compulsion canister back, finally. And then what else could we do first? I guess hit the evil things. Uh, they're all on the end. And then... Yeah, so much for that bridge. <laughs> that mechanic is not meant to be on a bridge, I suppose. Dynamic Siphon and then Tachyon could put two cards into play, so let's experiment on herself. Get a Fleet of Foot and Accelerated Assault. So normally I'd do the Fleet of Foot first, I think, but Accelerated Assault would get a burst in the trash first. So I'm gonna do that. Because then I do get the one card off of Capitan in case I decide I want to hit Capitan. Each player may draw a card, like a Pushing the Limits and an Emergency Evac and a Potent Disruption. I don't want to play Pushing the Limits though, because I'm not going to be able to play an extra card. But what else could I do? Uh, I can't hit Mabel unless I play the Hypersonic Assault, which I don't really need to do. I could put the Synaptic Interruption out. I don't need to destroy environment cards. There's no ongoing cards out there. Um, research grant is sort of a waste, I think. Right, because we already did the one hit, so we don't need to do something else. Yeah, well, we'll get the synaptic interruption now. All right, and the rest of these aren't going to trigger. Isn't that dastardly? Not any villain from Scooby-Doo. We need a Sco we need a Scooby Doo villain, and once you flip him, his in cap or whatever is like curses. I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids and your skyscraper too, or something. I don't know. All right. So Capitan will flip back, and then bunches of nothingness. Skyscraper gets a colossal left hook. So unfortunately, Mabel is still alive and has one hit point. So Potent Disruption is probably what I'm gonna have to do. Unfortunately, Absorption is not active, so I can't combo it, but this would do energy damage and could take out Mabel. Um, so that's probably the best choice because Cosmic can't use powers, so I mean, not that that matters, but he can't use powers. So, as much fun as it is to combo this with a power, I'm not going to be able to do that. And that Dynamic Siphon is not useful right now because it's that one hit point. I could regain its hit points, but I can't use a power, so I'm going to lose that Dynamic Siphon. It's been treating us well. And get rid of Mabel. Oh! Dynamic Siphon returns! Don't cry for his loss. Don't mourn his loss. He's returned. And the Battalion Gunner, which is not going to hit uh, Constructs or Cosmic, because that's energy damage. It will hit Tachyon and Skyscraper, though. Womp womp. We are getting mileage from the Cosmic Crust. Capitan is going to put the top card of each hero deck under her card so she doesn't actually flip. Uh, we are losing a light speed barrage, a rest and recover, and a sustained influence. That's actually kind of sad. And then a bunch of single points of damage, which don't do anything. And then single points of damage. And that's it. There we are. Alrighty. Well, pushing the limits. And then what else? Uh, nine bursts in her trash, but I can't hit Capitan right now. So I have to somehow hit Capitan some number of times to be able to take her out. Uh, I could Hypersonic Assault, but that's a bit of a waste. It will destroy the Battle Forged, it won't hit the Siege Breaker, it won't hit Capitan, it will hit the Gunner. Uh, I want to hold on to that Blinding Speed because I don't like ongoing cards. <laughs> I guess I'll just do another Synaptic Interruption. And we last experimented on Tachyon, so Skyscraper, do something fun. Or not. 
That was exciting. Attacking on draws a light lightning reflexes and a sucker punch. Isn't that glamour? Glamour is annoying. Uh, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't anticipate emergency evacking. So we shall discard that. And it doesn't really matter. The light speed barrage is dead. Um, I don't remember what the other cards were. So I'll just hit Skyscraper to get a Rest and Recover, which I can't get back with Rest and Recover, sadly. Uh, and I'll just keep piling damage on Capitan. This was sustained influence, so I can't get back. Battalion Gunner's dead. And bunches of note damages. So I gotta switch sizes if I want to use a different power. There are no links in play. There are no links in play. So that's a little boring. I guess we do have the micro assembler. I could play the micro assembler and then I could discard and get whatever link I want. There are two links. Three links. A link between worlds. I guess we could get that Cortex Hyper Stimulator back or something. I don't know. Um. Yeah, put that on Skyscraper, and actually if I do that on Tachyon, or if I... What am I going to discard? Uh, do we have the can canister in the trash? I do have it in the trash, but if I discard it, I can't play it. I might want to play it, like being tiny and all. Um, I guess I don't have enough links to verify... Or, uh, What's the word? Not verify, it's to not rectify. I don't have enough cards to be able to play that card. Or not, not enough links in play to be able to play that card. And let's get that micro assembler on Tachyon because we could get her HUD goggles. As well as use it just to discard bursts if we need to. We lost a left hook. Alrighty, well, let's get that Dynamic Siphon back on Tachyon, because that was a pretty useful one. And do I anticipate these getting destroyed? That augments that ally is pretty low, so let's go ahead and absorb. Justify! That's the right fi! Uh, that word justified me. Mystified me. Um, Cosmic Crest. What's next? We're getting a new structure or level, and we are getting a structure, which is reducing damage to environment cards. That's... Mobile defense platform has been rather, rather boring, if I may say so myself. We get chip. So, who's considered second highest? Let's hit skyscraper. Because Tachyon's going to be hitting herself anyway. Although I guess chip's also going to go off. So, like, we are now, how far are we? 51 minutes in the stream, and T Capitan is 54 hit points! We're not even halfway there. I do want to be able to play more cards and draw more cards still, because we need to sort of, you know, move on in this game. Um, I wish I could just ping, but I can't ping. If I sucker punch, I destroy something. So Cosmic could play something, but I think I don't want to. You have a bad tendency to play Skyscraper in tiny form all the time. I'm trying to keep changing her size because she has, like, she can use a power at the start of her turn and then, you know, a power at the end of her turn, or, or, or on her power phase because of Augmented Ally, which I've been using to good effect. She has, still has a lot of cards in her hand and is doing lots of things. <laughs> Miss Defy. That sounds like some sort of vengeance uh, mini villain. Uh, jeez, I don't really want to play the hypersonic assault still. Like, I want to play it if like she has 15 crews in play. But if I do play it, uh, we will lose that last card that's underneath her. 
Not that I'm going to like play Lightspeed Barrage, it's still too early. I guess I'll just get a, a research, research grant out. And... Yeah, I'll just put these research grants out so that when she destroys on ongoing cards, we can destroy them. Or something, I don't know. And I was gonna get the HUD goggles, I guess. I could discard Sucker Punch and get HUD goggles. I could also experiment on... I think the next hero is Cosmic. But I think... I could also draw two and discard one, but I think we're gonna discard Sucker Punch for the HUD goggles. Yay! I used the power! Hey, Sanvar, how are you doing? You get a Pushing the Limits and a Lightning Reflexes. So discard a card to use a huge power. Do I have a tiny card in hand? I don't. Well, this is somewhat annoying. Because I wanted to play that Compulsion Canister. <laughs> I guess I could still use her... Um, micro assembler power for that purpose and wait what's in her deck that's what i'm trying to figure out we do have a neutralizing resonator and a cortex hyper stimulator um does she have any tiny cards left she does And I could use Colossal Left Hook to do damage. And discard cards to play cards. So... I've not found the time to play Proportionist. But Proportionist in conjunction with my constant size changing is pretty potent. So I guess I should keep that. Um, I want to keep rest and recover. I think I'm just gonna ditch. I don't want to. I don't want to ditch a size changer. I guess I'll just ditch a colossal left hook. This game is not gonna take two hours. <laughs> uh, it's not as exciting as last week's inaugural game, um, but it is interesting. So we can get that last card back. If only I can get it in Tachyon's hand. Um, I'm just gonna wail on Capitan. Cause, like, we need to, you know, win the game at some point, I suppose. And then a bunches of nothingness. Do, 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 do. So I guess I was gonna say Colossal Left Hook to do damage and then discard a card to play something else. So I shall do that. And then I want to play the Proportionist. I don't want to lose the Explosive Reveal. Because I want to be able to switch to normal on the next turn. I guess I could rest and recover, though. Uh, I don't want to lose... Like, uh, it feels dirty discarding a Compulsion Canister. It just seems like a waste. I guess I'm going to ditch the Monolith. As silly as that might seem. So now I'm a proportionist! And actually this is gonna trigger a lot of things, actually. So, uh, some fun things are gonna happen. Never mind, we're not actually doing her huge power just yet. Um... Oh, more. Oh boy, more discards. Um... What links are left in her hand? Cortex Hyper Stimulator, Neutralizing Resonator... <laughs> I'm gonna lose a Neutralizing Resonator. <laughs> to put a neutralizing resonator in play, except I want the Cortex Hyper Stimulator. Tectonic Choke Slam. Skyscraper's gonna need to get cards at some point. And... Something's gonna need to happen here. Um... I think I'm gonna put the Vitality Conduit on Skyscraper, even though I lost the card, or discarded the card that redirects damage to her, that's probably the best choice. Um, and since that, uh... Augmented Ally is going to get, de to get destroyed the next time she uses her huge power because of Proportionist, I should probably be ready to absorb it! And bring forth more things! And get a Sustained Influence. 
<laughs> that dental plan is key. Whenever a target is destroyed, put it under its associated deck. This is actually really good if the ship comes back. The ship can be put underneath the deck and it won't return from the trash if it does. True shots. She's finally flipped back. Um, I'll hit Cosmic. And then I guess hit Cosmic, I don't know. I'm just hitting on him. I guess I should have hit Skyscraper because she does have HP recovery now. All right, we're still not at below 10. Well, never mind. we're at below 10. I guess I didn't have to do that because I could have played another one. I don't really have enough cards anyway. And I do have enough that I could Hypersonic Assault now. So yeah, I'm actually going to undo that. Sorry guys, we're not minting the first game. I rewinded. No. But I'm going to keep pushing the limits. Um, Still only nine. No, we have ten bursts now. Yay, we have ten bursts. Hypersonic Assault. Um, this will at least stop Capitan and Chip from dealing damage. And True Shot. True Shot does do an appreciable amount of damage. And I could do 10 to Capitan, right? Yeah. None of those are bursts. I could destroy an environment card just to get another burst in my trash. And then do more with Lightspeed Barrage. But I think I'm going to skip. And I'm going to... Experiment. And I said I like to cycle, so it's Cosmic's turn. Discards. Those cards look like they're the same! They're both red and yellow! They should be like colorful and matching and stuff, but no, they're one shot and ongoing limited. Nimble Strike and Lightspeed Barrage. All right. We could have a fun and exciting turn coming up. Still no tiny cards. Jeez. Um, I do want to change size, so I'm going to play a normal card. And I guess we're going to use the rest and recover, because that will get me... I mean, there are a number of links in play now, right? There are three links, so I could do a variety of damage with Explosive Reveal. But I guess I'm going to ditch the Choke Slam. It does do good damage, but... I want to keep my size changers. This order doesn't matter. Uh, but we'll hit Copy Tone. And then damage, 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 damage. And then, let's see. Let's regain hit points first. And then, let's have Tachyon experiment. And some fun things could happen if I experiment on Skyscraper, I guess. She could change sizes twice now. Uh, and it's actually a huge chance because there are eight one-shots. Hmm. That is tempting. I'm gonna do it because it's smarter than just cycling through. <laughs> so much for that big chance. It's gone. It's over. Uh, the rest of this does not matter. Except Augmented Ally is gonna get destroyed. Uh... We'll shuffle it into the deck, and I don't really... I could Autonomous Blade on Skyscraper again, right? That's the thing. But I'm probably going to draw a card. Like, an Augmented Ally! So we can keep that going on Skyscraper, because that was pretty exciting. And now, Rest and Recover. Get undetectable relinking, that's a tiny card. And the emergency evac. And I can put any one of these cards back in my hand. Well, I'm gonna become tiny soon, so I can get links more easily. Um there are no links in my deck, so leaking incursion is rather boring. But I'm guessing I probably want to get that monolith. I discarded it earlier, but now I want it back. And let's draw, catch a ride, Linking Incursion, and Linking Incursion. Super useful when there's no links in your deck. 
Spot the error on Construct Cataclysm's art. What's the error? If it's oh, it's art, so it's not text. Uh, the error is that it's red and yellow, but it's not an ongoing card. I don't know. I'll wait for the answer. Do, do, do. So augmented ally on skyscraper again. And let's absorb. Get a wounding buffer. And mobile defense platform is reducing damage even more to these targets that don't do anything. Final breath. This is gonna destroy something. Uh, damage. Damage, damage. Something's getting lost. Um, with the two light speed barrages, we can do 20 damage. 23 if I play Nimble Strike. I'm just wondering if we can like somehow get Tropiton destroyed so I don't need a Cosmic Crest anymore, but... I think we'll put the Autonomous Blade. Because I think Cosmic has another one anyway. Shuffle it. And... Um, I want to draw a card. Potent Disruption. That's a card that he could play once Absorption has been used. Alright. Um, yes. This is fine, trust me on this. Everything is okay. Yeah, Nimble Strike first. Let's see what happens from this. I'm just gonna keep focusing on Capitan. Get a blinding speed. So... If I Lightning Reflexes, Lightning Reflexes, I can play four cards. I can play Blinding Speed, Blinding Speed, Light Speed Barrage, Blight Speed Barrage. <laughs> that would be pretty exciting. The door on the bus is on the wrong side. That was the answer. Isn't it... It's on the American side. Oh, but is he British? Then I guess that would make sense. If he's British, then it is an error. Um, yeah, at this point, I probably should just burn the blinding speeds. Um, in hopes to get more bursts on the next turn so we could really get a superpower turn. So blinding speed. And I'll just lose the shield generators. I want to keep the sky deck in case we need to destroy the ship, although the game is probably not going to last much longer. And... Experiment. Now, Skyscraper has two cards. A normal and a huge. And each time she becomes a higher size, she deals damage to each non-hero target. When she becomes a lower size, she draws a card. Whoops. Jeez, I keep wanting to tap this twice. She deals each target one damage. So Cosmic Crest will get destroyed, so Cosmic can draw or play a card. Like this is, if I experiment on Skyscraper, this is the experiment. These are the two cards. You don't often get to know what your experiment will be, but you have it here. But if I experiment on Sky on Tachyon, let's see, there are two ongoings and one equipment. So seven one-shots, so it's pretty likely a one-shot would get played. If I experiment on Cosmic, there's a number of constructs. I sort of feel like the guarantee is a little better. Yes. I shall experiment on Skyscraper. Oh my gosh, it was successful! Who would have thought? Uh, but I need to become huge first, so that I can become normal later, and then... 
yeah. I think that seems wisest. Wisest! So it's damage... Oh, right, this is the becoming a larger size effect. And then hit Skyscraper, or not Skyscraper, hit Capitan. I guess I could have hit Tachyon and then get more bursts in Tachyon's trash that way. Oh well. That's fine. Um, Chip will die. And then Crest will die. So Cosmic can draw or play a card. Potent Disruption. If I destroy a construct and deal damage, um, I could also play another card. Hmm. Choices. I shall play the Potent Disruption. And we shall destroy the Vitality Conduit. Shuffle it into my deck. So I can play the Autonomous Blade <laughs> on Cosmic. So that when Cosmic deals damage, the Autonomous Blade triggers. <laughs> that was a fast acting Autonomous Blade. Nothing else happens here. You're quite shocked. <laughs> Shocking. Also, oh yeah, the dynamic, dynamic siphon triggered, so discard for an equipment. There's no need for that. Draw two, discard one. We get a fleet of foot and a pushing the limits. That's annoying. The one burst that I could discard is fleet of foot. I guess I'll ditch the limits. Explosive reveal. Get the Rathian Monolith. We can destroy something. Tachyon doesn't need that micro assembler anymore. So I can do this to hit Capitan. So she's at 25 and we're on the end of Tachyon's turn. So had I committed to the light speed barrages, Capitan would be down really low right now. Oh well. Uh, what fun is planned defeats or victories I don't know uh, let's ditch this explosive reveal I could draw two cards or I could get something out actually if I oh dynamic siphon will get destroyed I would have liked to use the dynamic siphon um, What's something that's particularly exciting? I mean, the compulsion canister, I guess, is exciting enough, so... Let's guarantee I get it... by discarding... a monolith. Get the compulsion canister. Um, increased damage dealt by this card to targets with 10 or fewer HP by 1. So, Final Breath would hit himself for more. That just seems like the most useful thing. And I think I want to become tiny, because then I could play my other canister, but... If I become huge, I do more damage across the board. My original plan was to be a monolith, so I'll go ahead and be a monolith. So we do bunches of damage to everyone, and then I hit everyone. No hero damage this time because of the monolith. Instead of doing what my heart says to do... Instead of doing what your heart says to do, what Jeremy would do. I feel like there's a missing word in there. I should do what Jeremy would do. Uh, let's see. Capitan is not going to get past uh, Skyscraper's damage resistance. 
so instead, well, I guess I'm just, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wounding buffer, and then absorb. And then Tachyon will win the game, at least. Cosmic weapon. So spoilers, Tachyon's winning the game. Shield generator. And then Temporal Thief. Oh, geez, Louise. There goes the supersonic response, the leaking incursion, the potent disruption, and a bunch of damage that's not actually going to trigger. And then there's that. This all redirects the skyscraper. But the wounding buffer goes off. Yay. This doesn't matter. Wounding buffer kills final breath. All right. Well, it doesn't matter because it's gonna redirect a skyscraper. So let's fleet a foot. HUD goggles, proportionist, harsh offense. Um, this tachyon's not been dealt damage, so let's nimble strike. I guess supersonic response would still do more damage, but who cares? At this point, who cares? Uh, one card play left. Two card plays left. Three card plays left. So I guess if I want the best, I can supersonic response first. So that goes in my trash. And then Lightspeed Barrages, and it's an overkill. Yay! And that's the first game of 23. 22 to go. Yay. So we got some good Prime Warden's Captain Cosmic action going. Didn't really get the super exciting turn where he destroys everything and plays 19 cards. We did get to see some Skyscraper and Cosmic interactions, and Tachyon provided a lot of field support. And of course, ended the game. The old defense platform was a non-entity, and Capitan took forever to get Cruz out, so that she was basically a non-issue. Even though we're sitting at single-digit hit points, I was not really concerned much in that game. So I sort of lucked out, but it was also sort of a pretty good matchup. But now... For those of you, all two, three of you who were here at the start of the stream, uh, the first game was predetermined. I could show you the card, or not the card, the paper that says what game I was going to play, but it has some personal information on it, so I don't really want to show that. Second game is viewer's choice. So you get to choose the villain, you get to choose how many heroes, you get to choose the heroes, you get to choose the environment, and I guess first and foremost, you get to choose whether it's even a solo or uh, a classic or team villain match and then the villain or villains so we're gonna put this up to the chat so as soon as I type in the words choose and we're gonna choose classic or team first right the word is team yes the first person to respond to this inquiry gets the choice choose classic or team classic all right we have a single villain match so now Choose the single villain. As soon as I hit enter, the question is live. The choice is ba ba da bum. Do 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 do. Iron Legacy. Someone is feeling particularly fiendish. All right. So I guess the next choice, which might determine the hero choice, so it is pretty important. Choose difficulty. And the question is live. Do, 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 do. Oh, that was fast. Oh, wow. People are starting to get ready for this ultimate. Someone wants to see something fiendishly difficult to the point of outright impossible. All right. So since people are starting to uh, figure out the game, I should probably switch it up and type in a random question so that no one knows what to expect. Aha, I was waiting for someone to say, like, a number or a hero. We got Rook City, so apparently we want something that's outright impossible. For me, for this being a choose-your-own uh, matchup thing, you guys are making this super difficult. <laughs> Alright, the next choice is the number of heroes. That is important, because I could just keep choosing heroes. Four! Four heroes! 
So we're gonna do this fast because we have a few more choices to make. Choose the first hero. The answer is Dark Watch Setback. All right, choose the second hero. Now people are thinking, hmm, Scholar of the Infinite. Choose the third hero. It's always the first choice after the question. It's Unity. That is one of Iron Legacy's nemeses, so that could be interesting. And then choose the fourth and final hero. If I can not type out. There we go. Guys. All right. So our second match, the Twitch chat picks matchup game, is Ultimate Iron Legacy against Dark Watch Setback, Scholar of the Infinite, Unity, and Guys in Rook City. This is why my third game is <laughs> going to be a random game because I don't really trust you guys to pick fair fights. It's at least some good music. Hopefully we get to hear the entire track before we die. I will never let down my guard. Justice must be dispensed to all. Now, stand down, evildoer. You are faced by heroic heroes, and we're good at things. I keep doing fingers. That's not what I want to do. Fingers are not good. All right. Dark Watch Setback starts with a Friendly Fire, Karmic Retribution, Plucky Break, and whoops, sorry. Scholar of the Infinite starts with Grace Under Fire, Mortal Form to Energy, Solid to Liquid, and Transmutive Recovery. Unity starts with a B-Bot, Brainstorm, Champion Bot, and Modular Workbench. And Guy starts with the best card ever! Let me see that. Super Ultra Kawaii and Extreme! Hopefully Sanvar is proud of my guys reading abilities. So for those of you who uh, don't remember Iron Legacy, and I forgot to read Capitan's flip side mechanics. Villain, Ironclad Tyrant. Set up. At the start of the game, Iron Legacy enters play, Ironclad Tyrant side up. Cards are revealed from the top of the villain deck until four ongoing cards are revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are returned to the villain deck, which is shuffled. Gameplay. At the start of the villain turn, if Iron Legacy has 20 or fewer HP, Iron Legacy flips. Iron Legacy is immune to environment damage. At the end of the villain turn, Iron Legacy deals each hero target three melee damage. Advanced. All damage dealt by Iron Legacy is irreducible. Challenge. Final Justice. At the start of the villain turn, the villain trash is shuffled and cards are revealed until an ongoing card is revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are returned to the villain trash. So it's going to be really hard to dispatch with ongoing cards. It's also going to be really hard to survive. Thank you very much. We have a Galvanized, so that's wonderful. We have an Armored Fortitude, sweet. We have a Demoralizing Presence, because damage increases are awesome, and even more damage increases are awesome. So we have Superhuman Redirection. So the first time Iron Legacy would be dealt to knock out Blow. Not really, but you know, redirect that damage to the hero with the highest. And then, Three damage across the board, but wait, it's six because of all the boosters. And it's irreducible damage too, so Scholar can't just, you know, become an Iron Scholar and survive. And it's six to Unity, so that's cool. Alrighty. We're alive. That's the good news, I think. Ah, uh, man. Lots of ongoing cards, and they're gonna come back pretty easily. We could friendly fire and kill setback. <laughs> we could not do that. We could regain hit points, or we could destroy an ongoing card. That's probably the best bet. Unity's probably gonna have to get that B-Bot out, I would guess. I don't know. Um. Extreme might be quite handy, yes. It actually would bypass, you know, Scholar's thing about Bobber, Doohickey. Like, it will bypass the uh, reverse text. But yes. Uh, I guess, whoops, sorry is probably the best call. So, 
I mean, we're gonna if we want to be able to, you know, not have all five in play at the next turn, we're gonna need to destroy at least two. So Bebot needs to be used. Um So what's more important? I don't think demoralizing presence is really it's not really gonna make or break us. So let's get rid of the damage reduction. Get tokens. And then let's mitigate. Actually, do I want to do that? Oh, I guess we'll help with Scholar at least. Scholar won't hit himself. Yay, he won't hit himself. Alright, well. I guess I'll get the mortal form out and then the transmutive recovery could be used. So this damage is reduced and he does a single hit point. First blood! Yay! Only 31 hit points to go. We get a second mortal form. He has no ongoing cards I need to destroy. I should have just destroy Galvanized. That's what I should have destroyed. As much as I want to use Brainstorm, I'm going to need to get Bebot out. And... Do I want to destroy the workbench or keep it in play? I guess I'm going to keep it in play. In case I get some other bot. Um... just want to keep the Brainstorm. So bye, Champion Bot. Unity draws another B-Bot. All right, good. We can keep destroying ongoing cards in this game. That's useful. Um, oh man, I want to keep the best card ever, but I don't have things that combo with it. So let's get a say cheese, a say cheese, hit legs, hit points. Woo! Woo! Okay. Hmm. Can I steal the modular workbench for, for uh, for laughs and giggles? Uh, say cheese does one damage. Don't have enough cards to fund this. I want to save that for if legs flips. So I guess I'm just gonna say cheese. All right. And I want to draw cards. Blatant reference! And let's take out Bebop before Legs' turn. Otherwise, we're for sure getting that one ongoing. But if I destroy another ongoing, we can at least get a choice. So let's destroy... Uh... I'm not really going to be doing five or more damage at a single source, am I? I don't think I am. Let's destroy Demoralizing Presence. Guys, the Barbarian! Good, we have comboing cards now. There's a chance. Unless Guys dies. In which case, there is no chance. On going from the trash is Armored Fortitude, so that's annoying. Former Allies! So, there go a lot of cards. I don't think that Karmic Retribution is going to... Be useful, not enough targets for Grace Under Fire. Uh, I wanted that B-Bot, but now I can't get it and play. Oh, I guess I could if I destroy Modular Workbench. I wanted to brainstorm. But, yes. And let's ditch the Say Cheese, I guess. Deal damage and destroy equipment cards. So I can't get B-Bot out at all now. Too much woo. Alright, let's get past this. Are we at least still in, uh, nope. Guys is in single digits. Alright, well. Unfortunately, I can't destroy Armored Fortitude. Unity is just sitting there all depressed like. So. I could plucky break, and that would do everything on the card. So I'll do that. So exceeded expectations, a single point of damage, hit points for whatever it's worth, and damage reduction, which will save the scholar. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, no, not solid to liquid. Transmutive recovery, hit the scholar, or not the scholar, hit the legs. 
keep moving. Expect the worst and damage, which... Oh, he did discard cards because of former allies. That's right. Get out of the way! Unity can't play cards. There are no equipments in play. And she's probably gonna die anyway, but Inspired Repair and Platform Bot... That she can't get into play just yet. I don't really want to do this, but... I mean, guys is gonna die anyway. So I have to combo as much as I can. Uh, we shall play... Hopefully we can at least flip Legacy in this game. Uh, discard a card. All right, hopefully we get, no, no, he's immune to environment damage, so he's not actually gonna go to lower than 20. Play the top card of the villain deck, of course, of course. Top card is Iron Justice. So, that's exciting, and, well. Well. <laughs> I mean, Scholar would combo well with that and channel, but on the other hand, Superhuman Redirection is out there. So channel's not going to be super useful. <laughs> Iron Legacy is too strong, indeed. Demoralizing Presence is back. And Superhuman Redirection is here. And I think people are going to survive. That's the good news. Sort of. Nope. Guys is dead. Avenge me. Because someone thought it was a wise idea to be a barbarian that turn. Someone thought it was a wise idea to be a barbarian. Let's see. His incap abilities. Uh, is there anything that's useful? Discard a card. If it's a one shot, draw two. If it was an ongoing or equipment, regain hit points. Reveal the bottom three cards. Put one on top, one in the trash, one in the play. That's not useful. If there are four or fewer, destroy one. And then if there are no cards in play, stand up and do a funky dance! We can at least destroy Scum and Villainy because dealing each hero target three melee damage is not going to help. Yeah, we will be doing a funky dance. Indeed. Oh man, I wish I could get out of the way, but... I can't hit Iron Legacy unless I keep moving into a into a solid to liquid, and then I regain to deal one to Legacy. But no, get out of the way. He's not even gonna get past that anyway. So never mind. That mortal from the energy is not really doing anything right now, unfortunately. And I can't reduce damage to Scholar because of damage re reduction <laughs> from Legacy. <laughs> um, well, that's annoying. What did you miss? We are in our second game of the night. And the second game of the night is Viewer's Choice. And the viewers chose Ultimate Iron Legacy in Rook City. So I think my viewers... <laughs> For whatever reason, want me to suffer. For whatever reason. Like, there are certain matches that are, like, legitimately difficult, and then there are certain matches that are difficult by virtue of just being outright impossible. <laughs> I don't like the outright impossible matches. I like the games where you can win, but it's a struggle. This one is not going to be a win. Sorry. It's not, it's, it could be a win. I gotta be positive. Uh, I mean, Scholar is gonna. No, Scholar will survive unless Legacy deals damage. Or deals extra damage, rather. So, Scholar will at least survive. So, assuming that Scholar survives, what can I do to buff Scholar? <laughs> I'm okay with evil. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to combo a mortal form. I'm just going to get Expect the Worst out. 
And then you have it. I know it's not really super useful, but then you have it. Bring what you need. All right, so can Unity get an equipment card? Nope. But Hero can use a power, increase that damage by two. So Scholar could do, he's discarded zero cards. He could do two Infernal, which is still one to Legacy. Or we could do a Risk, which is not going to be super exciting. Yeah, I guess, because Unity's not surviving. I guess, wait, why was that? Oh, because that's zero plus one, that's right. So we did two points of damage, yay! Destroy something that doesn't exist. Turret bot. Um, right, so if Scholar regains two hit points, he deals one point of damage to Legacy. Nope, we're gonna do a funky dance. Get your funky dance going. All right. Okay, well, that was useful. Deal here with the highest, which is Scholar. So Scholar's outright dead. And then everyone else is outright dead. <sighs> Thank you for the exciting second match. <laughs> I'm being snarky, but you know, it's, you know, we got it out of our system. Next week, you know, maybe the viewers will be uh, more inclined to provide a possible match. <laughs> I'm not gonna try again. I'm gonna hit new game. And as I said, I'm gonna do a random match. But I guess the first question is, is this random match gonna be standard, advanced, challenge, and ultimate? And the second question is, should it be challenge or, t or classic or team? Hmm. I guess there's one way to do this and it's to just mash this button repeatedly and the answer is team. Then I'm gonna mash this button a bunch. I'm not looking at it, so I'm not gonna see the outcome of this. And now I'm gonna hit randomize, and I'm not seeing the screen, so I'm not gonna see what the match is. I'm gonna hit start game, and we're gonna start with whatever this is. So I'm gonna hit randomize. I'm also gonna hit a bunch, you know, to be super random about it. And then I'm gonna hit start game, fight. Where is it? There it is, there's fight. This match is here. This match is friction and Fright Train and Proletariat against GI Bunker, Mr. Fixer, and Omnitron X in Doc Thorath Capital. You can't match my speed, you'll find out the hard way! I may be just a soldier, but you're still going down. Alrighty, and it's a challenge match, by the way. GI Bunker starts with adhesive foam grenade, two ammo drops, and a grenade launcher. Mr. Fixer starts with two bloody knuckles, a charge, and a dual crowbars. Omnitron X starts with a bioengineering beam, defensive blast, elemental axe chassis, and reset. So Friction, villain, shockingly speedy. Setup, at the start of the game, Friction enters play, shockingly speedy, side up. Shock dampeners and stolen gear are put into play. The villain deck is shuffled. Gameplay, at the end of Friction's turn, Friction deals the hero target with the highest HP, one melee damage. Challenge, Sturdy Tech. The Shock Dampener's card is indestructible. You don't have a choice. You have to leave it in play. Proletariat. Villain, the Everyman. Setup. At the start of the game, Proletariat enters play. The Everyman side up. Two cards named Proletariat are put into play. The Villain deck is shuffled. Gameplay. Whenever this card would be dealt non-psychic damage, redirect that damage to the clone card with the lowest HP. At the end of Proletariat's turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP to melee damage. Challenge, the will of the people. Targets named proletariats are immune to psychic damage. So you have to destroy the clones if you want to hit proletariat proper. And they're immune to psychic, so you can't just hit even the clones with psychic. And then Fright Train, villain, one track warrior. Set up, at the start of the game, Fright Train enters play, one track warrior side up. Engine of Destruction is put into play, the villain deck is shuffled. 
gameplay. At the end of Fright Train's turn, Fright Train deals the hero target with the highest HP, three melee damage. Challenge, all aboard! As long as Fright Train is a target, redirect all hero damage to Fright Train. And this is Bunker's Nemesis, so plus one between Fright Train and Bunker. So let's see what we get. We get Shock Dampeners and Stolen Gear and Proletariat and Proletariat and Engine of Destruction. That is always the case. Friction is playing a Blinding Surge, which is super exciting when there's no Surge cards or ongoing cards. And her second card play is Unhealthy Speed, which is going to hit everyone. And then she's going to be immune to lightning damage this entire game. We get Argentium, which is going to deal projectile damage, but Guys is not active, so we can still deal damage, which is good. All right, so Fright Train is our first target because all of our damage is getting redirected to Fright Train. So anytime that we can deal damage, that gets redirected to Fright Train. Bunker can do three instances of damage with Grenade Launcher, so that seems useful. So let's hit, I don't know, Fright Train. And then let's hit someone else, like Proletariat. <laughs> Not that it matters, it redirects the Fright Train. And then let's hit Friction, just so it redirects the Fright Train. Bunker gets an external combustion, which would be really nice when coupled with, you know, Fright Train's thing. Proletariat, number three, or number four, I suppose. Um, I don't think this matters. I'm super looking forward to the new music. I love all of Jean Marc's music. It's so good. All right, dual crowbars is going to do the most damage to Fright Train, so doesn't really matter. First hit. And then second hit. And then the dual crowbars! Surprise! Last stop. So the card revealed is a target, so damage to bunker. And then let's hit Omni, I suppose. Alrighty. Defensive Blast would be super exciting against Fright Train, but we don't have a plating in play. I would have to get the Elemental Axe of Chassis, but I also need to get a plating in hand. Um, there are a number of Cold, Fire, Lightning, and Energy in this deck, right? This is Lightning, this is Energy, this is energy, so I'm going to get the Elemental Exo Chassis. And then you have it. And now let's time shift. Lots of decks here to potentially time shift. So who should get the time shift? Um, let's throw it on Fixer. Fixer gets a meditation. Nice. Search the deck. I think Driving Mantis is super useful, especially in a Vengeance game, because there's always, like, most of the damage is one or two in Vengeance games, in my experience. And Omni gets the Electro Deployment. Alright. Oh, hey! Freedom Fighters doing lightning damage, which is not going to hit Omnitron, and Mr. Fixer's going to redirect it! This is actually really good. Uh, and this is not hero damage, so I can redirect this to whoever I want. Um... Like, normally I would probably redirect to Stolen Gear, because that's extra card plays, but I could also... Oh, Friction's immune, and Proletariat redirects, and Fright Train is going to be destroyed once Bunker plays his external combustion. So, with that in mind, uh, yeah, I'm probably just going to try to destroy Stolen Gear as, as fast as possible. And nothing else is affected, as far as I can tell. Redirect this, doesn't matter who. 
All right. Synergy Surge for the top card of each villain deck in turn order. Oh, this is exciting. Uh, and this will take out Proletariat. And then... This guy is then damaged and taken out. This is actually not helping the external combustion that Bunker was going to utilize, but that's okay. Um, the rest of this doesn't matter. The Hippo. Doc Tusser. And Unstoppable Momentum. Interesting. So Mr. Fixer has to discard a card, otherwise he takes more damage. So sure, let's lose that bloody knuckles. Redirect this uh, to stolen gear. So we don't get the extra card play. Yes, we did it. That was perfect. According to plan, everything went according to plan. All right, so external combustion. Bunker deals himself two fire damage and deals each non-hero target three fire damage. But Fright Train says, redirect all hero damage to Fright Train. So look at this. That external combustion is lighting up Fright Train's uh, engine. I suppose. Um, let's just hit Fright Train. Fright Train is definitely dying to this. <laughs> The question is, which targets do we want to not target? And unfortunately, no Fright Train has no targets, so it's not really worth redirecting from those. So I guess I want to keep the Freedom Fighters, because it's actually helping us a lot. And then if I hit the Proletariat clone, and then Proletariat, I can actually damage Proletariat. So I want to keep that. So I guess Shock Dampener, since it's indestructible, should get the redirect. All right, one down, two to go. And now I have to hit Proletariat first, the clone first, so then I could hit Proletariat proper. And then the rest of these. And we don't need to worry about damage reduction right now, so let's use the grenade launcher. This is two, two, and one, so let's put the two hits on the main villains. And then this one hit doesn't really matter. I guess I can destroy Argentium. And Bunker draws a grenade launcher. So that was a good bout of strategy if you missed it. Because the order was super important with that external combustion. We managed to damage all the things we wanted to hit and we redirected from the things we didn't necessarily need to hit. Overwhelm the Mighty, which is only a single instance of damage. So it's not doing too much. This Driving Mantis will go off though. So I just want to destroy Proletariat, I think. Yeah, Proletariat's in cap isn't too exciting. Uh, Fright Train's in cap, what is it? It's the hero with the highest HP deals themselves too toxic, and that is Mr. Fixer. Fun fact. So... He's going to be utilizing the dual crowbars a lot. Um, let's put the bigger blows on the proletariat, I think. I don't know if this is necessarily the best way of doing it, but hey. We'll probably be able to destroy proletariat pretty fast. Honestly, this game is probably going to end fast. I think we're pretty well set up, especially with Harmony. What loot is doing what the show is designed around? That's another lit down. Yeah, so if, if Fixer does this, he can actually damage Proletariat. Yeah, so Proletariat's at least dead to Freedom Fighters. So the question is, can I get the Elemental Axe of Chassis, or the Defensive Blast, I guess, going off? Let's reset and hope to get a plating. We did not get a plating. We got a technological advancement, which can get a plating into play. But it's not actually going to uh, do what we want it to do. Well, I'll get Defensive Blast out in case... Because I'm going to look at the top of Omnitron's deck. 
if this card is what it I th what I hope it is and it's not uh, I was hoping that it was the thing that lets him use a power at the end of his turn but it wasn't I might as well put this in play because it will put the other plating in my hand and then I can do the uh, defensive blast next turn I don't want it in my trash <laughs> he wrote down pig technological advancement number two so the freedom fighters will hit on the Tron but I think that's fine so will the Therathian military so because the Therathian military is out it's actually gonna kill proletariat so I don't have to redirect mr. fixers blow to proletariat unfortunately friction is immune to lightning anyway but I can still redirect this to someone uh, which ones are proletariats? Doc Tusser, so redirected to the hippo. The rest of these will take damage. And then damage. Alright, we have friction left. Can we do this? Friction deals the hero with the highest HP 3 melee. That's fine, because I want Fixer to be higher. Uh, this will redirect, so that's useful. And then this can go on Omnitron, because that will get reduced. And now Fixer's higher, so Fright Train's going to have Fixer deal damage. Um, there's not really much of a need for anything. Do two damage here. And then let's throw two damage on Fixer, because it will get redirected. Fun fact! You can hit hero targets! Sometimes it's even useful. Sometimes you're just Ronway. Alright. So if I don't win this game, I'm going to be thoroughly displeased. Alright, so here's a fun trick. Are you ready for fun tricks? Is this go even going to be useful? Uh, let's... let me think for a second. Uh... Hint, this is what I'm thinking about. Ah, it's not gonna do enough damage for that. <laughs> there was going to be a fun trick with this, but I don't think it's going to... Ah, screw it, I'll show it. Here's a fun trick. Mr. Fixer's damage dealt to him and by him is increased by two. So wait, I'm hitting himself? But that's plus two twice! Why would I do such a thing? Because I can now hit Friction for nine. I forgot, ooh, Blade Knuckles does increase by two. We did it! Awesome strategery finish. I didn't factor in the plus two on the second hit. I was factoring in the plus one on the second hit. I was thinking it was going to do seven. But hey, that's a nice combination. Bloody Knuckles and dual crowbars. If Mr. Fixer hits himself, he can hit someone else for a super duper amount of damage. Alrighty. So, that was game three. I wasn't expecting to get to game three, let alone finish game three within two hours. But we have. So I don't even have plans for a game four. So I feel like we should do a mix match and something. So the mix match then. So okay, let's put it this way. Choose the number of heroes. <laughs> Four. Alright. Choose the first hero. We're doing a mix match. You get to choose the heroes. If you want to choose the heroes. I'm not letting you choose the villain in environment this time. Sorry, folks. Tempest. 
All right. Choose the second hero. I'm doing it this way just for fairness. I would ask it on stream, but then there would be like delay issues. Someone who has a 30 second Twitch delay is going to be unfairly, uh, will get, will have less time to react than someone who has a 10 second delay. Chrono Ranger as the villain. No, sorry, vetoed. Choose the third hero. Sentinels. Choose the fourth and final hero. Everyone's thinking. Santa. Yeah, we've had one game with guys. We should have a second game with guys. Santa guys! All right, so you chose the heroes. I'm gonna choose the villain. Let's think, we had Capitan, which was difficulty two. We had Iron Legacy, which was difficulty four. Capitan was standard, Legacy was ultimate, and the team match was challenge, so we're gonna do an advanced match this time. We had a difficulty two, we had a difficulty four, and I don't remember what these difficulties were. They were two, two, three. So that sh should mean I'm gonna do a difficulty one, but that's actually a little boring. Uh, so I guess I'm just gonna go with the difficulty three then. And... Let's think, Dreamer? Sure. We're fighting the dreamer because, you know, children are the best villains to fight against. So I said mix match, you chose heroes, I chose villain. Who's choosing environment? Randomizes. Randomize gives me the enclave of the endlings. You fight the strength of the storm. Face the maelstrom. Alrighty. Tempest starts with electrical storm. Two gene down shackles and a lightning slash. Chrono Ranger starts with a ranger's mark. Two sudden contracts and a terrible tech strike. Sentinels start with a blackout. Fling in the darkness. Restorative burst and second chance. Santa Guy starts with blatant reference. Retcon. Say cheese. And where did I leave that? The Dreamer. Villain, the dreamer dreams. Set up. At the start of the game, the dreamer enters play, the dreamer dreams, side up. Cards are revealed from the top of the villain deck until four projection cards are revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are returned to the villain deck, which is shuffled. Gameplay. At the start of the villain turn, if there are no projection cards in play, four hero ongoing cards are destroyed, and the dreamer flips. Whenever the dreamer would be dealt damage by an environment card, the players may redirect it to the hero character card with the lowest HP. If the dreamer is reduced to zero or fewer HP, removed from the game, or otherwise destroyed, the heroes lose the game. Advanced. Reduce damage dealt to projections by one. There's a key word in that advanced clause. Reduce damage dealt to projections by two, or by one. Not villain targets, projections. That's important. All right. So, Dark Hero, Toy Master, Granite Oni, and Whippicorn. So the Dark Hero is going to make it super hard to damage these guys. The Macabre Spectre, of course, because with damage boosts, that's excellent. Uh, target dealt damage this way cannot deal damage until the start of the next villain turn. I feel like that Lightning Slash is going to be super important. Electrical Storm and Gene Bound Shackles, not as much. Uh, and his base power is also not super useful because that will hit the Dreamer for one <laughs> and everything else for negative one. Also, Dark Hero has the same issue. Reduced damage dealt to projections by one. But increased damage dealt by villain targets, so that does affect the Dreamer. Dreamer gets no damage resistance from her own projections, otherwise it'd be too fair. Um, this target dealt damage, so I cannot deal damage. Is Chrono Ranger even going to be able to deal damage? because with the minus two, so I guess not. So let's hit Chrono Ranger. 
And then damage across the board. Alright. So if I lightning slash the dark hero, he'll be down to two. If I... That's not going to be useful. Fling in the darkness would destroy it, but it would also destroy it from full. So I don't need to lightning slash the dark hero for that. So I'm gonna dark I'm gonna lightning slash the Spectre because he's a lot of damage. And I'm not gonna use a power. Tempest draws a ball of lightning. Alright. Also, granite Oni has a damage reduction. Jeez. That's super annoying. Toy Master deals damage based on the number of equipments in play, so... I don't think we have equipments, so that doesn't matter. Um... So I'd probably say Whipicorn is the next one to hit, because this stops us from dealing damage. Toy Master could be pretty deadly, though. Granite Oni is going to keep going after Sentinel targets, which is kind of sad. Not sad, but upsetting. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a sudden contract into something. I guess if I sudden contract, I can get kill on sight, and then Chrono Ranger can get more options. Because the Dark Hero is going away for sure. Chrono Ranger gets a terrible tech strike. Alright, so let's fling the Dark Hero. Which it doesn't really matter if Wraith, Wraith deals this damage, but that's okay. So Chrono Ranger gets Temporal Grenade, Sudden Contract, Temporal Grenade. Lots of Sudden Contracts at the top of his deck today. I am inclined to think I want to block, but that Granite Oni is going to do two to the Idealists, but yeah, I'll just block. Telekinetic Wallop! Okay. Do one target, one cold. Unfortunately, none of these guys are going to take damage, so that's a little unfortunate. Um, where did I leave that? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm that guy. Guy's the Barbarian. I did get what I was Good. looking for. Alright, so... Presents! Whee! Super Ultra Kawaii! You have to be careful with the presents in this game, I guess. Well, I don't know. Second lowest. All right, that's Granite Oni. No, Idealist. I forgot about the Idealist. Well, that is Toy Master. Stream is actually going to be super helpful if we can keep track of HPs. Whipicorn. Well, that's tragic. Who's considered have the highest? It doesn't matter because neither of these guys are going to deal damage. It's okay. Like this is a damage game, right? <laughs> Um, I mean, Gene Von Shackles, I guess, could theoretically have use at some point in this game. So I'm gonna put it in play. Aquatic Correspondence. Uh, if I put Sudden Contract on the Whippicorn, can we do lots of damage to him with the Sentinels? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to use blackout. That's gonna hit the dreamer, and it's not gonna do enough damage to uh, villain targets. But I could use telekinetic wallop. Yeah. So let's put by any means on one of the whippicorns, because now we can bypass damage resistance. Yay! Eye on the prize. And now telekinetic wallop. So 
so... Granite Oni is going to keep going after Idealist, but so much damage reduction. At least I have a second chance, or a restorative burst, so we can get Idealist back pretty easily. I could destroy the Whippicorn if I do this. So I will. Except no, because Stream will deal with it. So instead I'm gonna block. Good hero, bad hero. <laughs> My little Whippicorn. <laughs> Jeez. I didn't know you were a whippy. Uh, is there things you want to copy yet? Not just yet. Um, I don't want to hit the whippicorn. Because Dream's going to take him out. So I think I'm not going to play a card because I don't think I'll... I want to, I want to hold on to these cards. Let's get more presents! Yay! <laughs> Not an MLW fan, I just saw that one. Gimme key character. Alright. Erded is gonna go after heroes. But Zream can take out Whippicorn. Yay! And then, this is damage. I don't know who's the better choice for this. I'll hit guys. And then this hits someone, I guess, Tempest, I don't know. Uh, Treacherous Ape, oh geez. That's an annoying one. Runner Ranger can't deal damage, that's okay. I can at least ball lightning and destroy the treacherous ape. But I could ball lightning and do a lot of damage to Granite Oni. And then the treacherous ape is gonna go off repeatedly <laughs> until we dispatch with him. I don't wanna waste that four damage hit though on the treacherous ape. That Granite Oni needs to somehow die. So a ball lightning. The Granite Oni. He is considered to have the highest. I could now squall and hit the Dreamer for three, which is half of her HP, so we can win. Alright. Corona Ranger cannot deal damage, so let's avoid the damage dealing things if we can. I guess I could Temporal Grenade and destroy Erded, because he's just going to hurt us. So I'm going to do that. Alrighty. Exciting turn. Uh, tip Mainstay. Keep Idealist alive. So we don't want to damage the Dreamer. Uh, we could... Heal, Idealist, uh, no one's in capped, no one's in capped. So a good hero, bad hero seems best, because that heals Idealist, and we can take out the Treacherous Ape. Yay! Oh, that destroyed Gene Bound Shackles. Oh well. Uh, that was always going to happen. I don't really have a plan yet as far as surviving survivability goes. But at least, you know, we're staying alive. We have to somehow destroy all projections in order to flip the dreamer, but when she's flipped, she's awful. Is Dr. Hero's power a hero target, or can I use it to heal the dreamer? One hero target regains three HP, so yeah, it doesn't heal the dreamer. Um, Hippocratic Oath, though, would heal the dreamer. Up to three targets regain one HP each. So with that in mind, I could hit the Dreamer with Hippocratic Oath out. But I'd have to keep Hippocratic Oath out to maximize its usage. There's still no reason to play these cards. I guess I could heal if I give a character. So I'll try that. 
No hit points! Super exciting. I guess we discarded a one-shot, so we didn't get the violent nightmares. That's good. I knew that was going to happen. The fixed start clued me in to the fact that there was going to be a violent nightmares on her third card play. Kappa. I don't want to play those cards. Let's just keep putting presents under the tree in hopes that Santa is going to give us something exciting. Look what I found! This card deals each non-environment target one melee. This card deals any target damage that way one toxic. Okay. Well, I guess I have to hit the Toy Master. And then this isn't gonna hit projections, unfortunately. It won't hit the, the Sentinels though, which is good. So it's only hitting three heroes. Corruption. All right, so what is the Dreamer gonna do? I'll just hit these guys. I don't really know if that one damage was important, but I should have considered it strongly, I suppose. I guess it would affect the Whippicorn. So either Tempest or Chrono Ranger can't deal damage again. I'm actually does just... No, okay. Tempest is not dealing damage. And now a bunch of two damages. So we're actually hurting a lot. <laughs> and Tempest doesn't really have much, like Vicious Cyclone would do zero damage to targets. So that's useful. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna draw cards. Like Lightning Slash, that's good. Chain Lightning is also good. Shielding Winds is decent. And Otherworldly Resilience, if he could survive. <laughs> Oh man, okay, so... Hmm... Yeah, we have to somehow do a lot of damage with heroes who don't usually do that much damage. I guess Sentinels could do a lot of damage, but... And Tempest also does a lot of damage, but it's usually spread damage. Uh, let's get the hat. I want the hat. Oh, I guess Masada would be useful, wouldn't it? No, I'll get the hat. Because, plot, this isn't gonna hit anything, but I can hit corruption. Know the whole gang. I have not played that yet. And that's also a good card that I should have played. So the whole gang. And now what are we gonna put this on? Because if I do Hippocratic Oath... Actually, we don't have much in the way of damage dealing there. But Guy's also doesn't have much in the way of damage dealing, so... I guess Toy Master, because he's the most likely to be next destroyed. And I'll hit Corruption. And I'll hit Corruption. And I'll draw Masada. So there's the Masada. I don't have to search my deck for it, it's right there. All right, so that's going to be super useful. Yeah, I always forget about the whole gang, but the whole gang is a really good card against the Dreamer because you can destroy projections more easily. I instead opted for uh, kill on sight at one point and then by any means later. So my priorities are super straight. Yeah, Hippocratic Oath, I think. And... If I destroy the Toy Master, he destroys Granite Oni. If I do one damage to the Whippicorn, and I later destroy Toy Master, he can destroy Whippicorn. If I don't block... The Granite Oni's gonna hit the Dreamer. Or the Idealist. I guess I'll take out the ground at Oni, because then that's less damage to the Idealist, at least. And coordinated assaults. So hit points, yay! Let's heal up the Idealist. I generally just throw this at whoever's lowest. 
I don't think it really matters who's the highest right now, unless I want, like, Medico to not deal damage, I suppose, but... I'm not gonna do that. Actually, Medico with Blackout is good. <laughs> and it could potentially be used. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. Can guys deal damage? Yes. Could I copy Hippocratic Oath, perchance? I could. For funsies. Mr. Fixer's theme, for some reason, reminded me of, like, some early Final Fantasy, like, town music, I think, is what it reminded me of. It's good music, it just felt more like an RPG song, which is, I mean, it's, it's good, I'm not saying it doesn't fit in, it's just what I was the first thought of. Uh, look what I found, maybe? Currently, Zareem is going after Idealist, so if I do this on the Arachnoid, Zareem will go after the Arachnoid. And let's get one more set of presents under the tree. I just like getting, like, H presents. I don't know why, but I like getting H presents before I open them. Guys, gets a blatant reference. Immutus! Ooh. So, actually, that's not terrible. Uh, doesn't matter who. <laughs> that's going to Immutus. And then it doesn't matter who, this is all going to Immutus. Unfortunately, I can't just. Oh, I guess I can. It was just the dreamers that mattered. Alright, so Immutus is out. The Caber Spectre is out. Immutus cannot deal damage. Uh, Immutus is taking a lot of damage. I guess order sort of matters here. But we saved the hero targets, so that's important. I didn't actually math. I thought Mutus was going to survive, but all the hero targets were spared the, the Macabre Spectre's damage, so that's good. Okay. Um, Lightning Slash does five. That could do four to a target. It could take out the Macabre Spectre. If I Ranger's Mark, I can get the whole gang back. But then I have to destroy something after that. And do enough damage to be able to destroy something. Coordinated Assault can do four damage. And guys would need to deal damage. He could flip presence on someone though, so I guess there could be some exciting options there. Stream is gonna go after Whippicorn currently. <laughs> Every time something happens when he can't deal damage, I just laugh. What was I think someone once mentioned that Amutus is like that guy that shows up to the party but no one wants or something? I don't know. Immutus is like, hey guys, what's going on? Ow, hey, ow, no, ow, ah, ow, ah, ah, oh. I don't remember exactly what the words were, but it's just funny to think like he's the guy that shows up and then the police come or something. All right, oh, what's the best option here? I don't want to put an ongoing card out because when Dreamer flips, she destroys ongoings. Unless we can get enough ongoings out for fodder. But hmm. I could put out Gene Bound Shackles. If I use Squall, it would hit the Dreamer, but I could hit the Arachnoid for two. And then Whippicorn would be highest. Right? This is villain target? Yes. So I could then hit Whippicorn for two. And then Dreamer can heal up with Hippocratic Oath. 
Hippocratic Oath is an ongoing note, so it's gonna get destroyed. I just said I didn't want to play ongoing cards after I played an ongoing card. I'm super useful. Yeah, I think Gene Bound Shackles, and then... Here, order is super important. I'm gonna hit the Dreamer first. She's not considered to have the highest, but the Arachnoid is considered to have the highest. And then the Whippicorn is considered to have the highest. <laughs> so that's exciting. And then nothing else except the environment targets get hit. Alrighty. So, I could get Masada out, and that's probably what I'm going to do. There is currently no bounties in play. If I get one bounty out, we can do one irreducible damage. Um, do I want to get the whole gang back? Whole gang and coordinated assaults will take out the Whippicorn, who would then take out something else, but then the... Then Zream's gonna go after Idealist, which I guess isn't terrible. I feel like I need to be a little more set up though, but uh, I guess there's uh, gonna be some presence and then things will happen. Unless I don't open presence, because that's a little dangerous maybe. Okay, um. I guess we need to take out Corruption at some point too. Let's go ahead and get the whole gang back. And we'll put that on the Arachnoid. And no damage is going to be dealt. I'll hit the Arachnoid. But Masada can bypass reduction. Uh, I'm going to destroy the Spectre with the whole gang. So I'm going to hit the Whippicorn. And we get a terrible tech strike. Alright, so coordinated assault. Uh, anyone as long as it's not Medico. Destroy the Arachnoid. Destroy the Spectre. We're down to one projection, so we can flip the Dreamer, which is rather scary. <laughs> Let's go ahead and block up in case that contingency happens. Positive energy, which will hit the Dreamer. Let's heal the Dreamer so that she survives. Uh, let's not heal the Idealist, because I don't want Zareem to go after the Dreamer. Uh, but we'll heal... We'll put Ride Highest, in case we ever get her, his, her, hits uh, thingy. And that doesn't really matter. Okay. Um... So do we expect to destroy the last guy? I'm going to be flipping presents. The question is who? Probably Sentinels. Sentinels probably are the most useful card wise. So do I want to play a card here? Let's just pretend I'm four people. Yeah, I'm totally the Sentinels. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I am the Sentinels. Let's go ahead and flip the Sentinel cards. All right. Who's ready? We get Horrifying Dichotomy. So someone's going to regain three hit points. So remember that... Um, Hippocratic Oath says whenever Dr. Medico would deal damage, prevent that damage, and instead one hero target regains that much HP. So, all of this damage is going to get prevented, or that single damage, rather, is going to get prevented, but if I target a Sentinel with it, it's going to be increased by the Nemesis bonus. However, it is getting reduced by the block, so it's not actually fully effective. But I don't want to, like, hit the Whippicorn with this, because it's going to be reduced by one, so we'll just... Hit right, and then someone regains three. So let's heal, guys, because he just opened your presents. You know, when Santa comes down the chimney, you have to like uh, put milk and HP recovery cards under the chimney on the fireplace, whatever. Remember, milk and HP recovery cards. Uh, if I hit the whippicorn, Dreamer's flipping for sure. 
Let's just make sure the corruption doesn't go off. Aura of Vision. Dark Delusions. So that's actually going to hit the Dreamer. And then I can deal three damage. All right, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening! It's happening! And then the last card, good hero, bad hero, regain HP, deal damage. All right. It's happening! Where did I leave that? Heal the dreamer. And then... I guess the idealist? And guys, because he just left presents under your tree. What do you give his reindeer power use cards? Move this card next to the non-environment target other than the target this card is already next to. That's the dreamer. Ooh. That's actually super useful. Uh, I'll hit mainstay. I don't know. So I can actually do AoE damage really easily now. That's good. There goes those cards. Hope you liked ongoing cards, because they're all gone. All right. Violent Nightmares. So we're getting lots of projections. Grotesque Arachnoid and Illusory Demon. And... Two extra cards. First damage. I didn't actually read her flip text. Um, but her advanced rules increase damage, which is super useful when, you know, we're trying to win the game. Don't hit Blugo, he's saving you! Projected paralysis is going to freeze. Ooh. Oh, Chrono Ranger. Okay. And Chrono Ranger still can't play cards. You know, you're making it really hard when I want to be able to destroy projections and you're playing one shots that stop us from playing cards. Someone's being dealt damage. <laughs> this is actually an important choice that I just blew by, but Chrono Ranger is basically going to die <laughs> on the Dreamer's next turn, which is unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. All right, well. I can at least easily destroy these projections. They no longer have damage reduction, but they do have damage increase. So, do I want to do that? Might as well. Let's utilize Gene Bound Shackles to its maximum effectiveness. Yes. And then this. I don't want to hit Lugo. Blue goes, my friend. And I can at least... Am I going to be able to hit the arachnoid with someone else? Um, yeah, I, positive energy would do it. So I don't need to do this. I could save Blue Go one hit point. And then Blue Go actually can save Chrono Ranger. Otherworldly Resilience. Alright, Chrono Ranger cannot play cards. And he could do one damage. Instead, I'm going to draw two in case he survives. Just doing my job and compounded bow. All right. I probably should read this card because it's important. I have to I have to get eight cards under her card in order to win. Uh, her advanced rule is increased damage dealt by villain targets. Not just projections, but all villain targets now, of course, by one. And at the end of her turn, she deals two plus one psychic damage and then plays the top two cards of her deck. So we at least get more projections faster, but... <laughs> it's going to cause an explosion. Indeed. HP recoveries. And... Yeah, just keep the Sentinels alive as much as we can. Coordinated Assault. Um... I think I'm gonna wait one more turn for this. I'm gonna get two, but I wanna get best card ever. 
Oh, okay. Order matters. Oh, I never had best card ever. That was the previous game. Never mind. <laughs> you have to make sure you remember what game you're playing. Um... Like, I want to get out Super Ultra Kawaii and Blatant Reference and Guys the Barbarian. But I'm going to wait one more turn for that because there's currently nothing to hit. I have to operate under the assumption that guys will survive, you know, two more rounds. But I'll go ahead and play where I leave that and get those two cards. Because <coughs> more cards, more problems. Yes, I got what I was looking for. And I could flip presents, except there's nothing else to hit other than Blue Go. So let's just put more presents down. And then Guys is going to flip his own presents on his turn. Hopefully. And Guys gets an extreme. Alright. Basto deals a non-environment target with the lowest HP one melee. A target dealt damage this way cannot deal damage until the start of the next environment turn. That would be nice on the Dreamer. And actually, it is super nice on the Dreamer. I want to redirect. No! <laughs> Dreamer cannot deal damage! Yes! Thank you, Pasto! You're my friend! Granite Oni. Followed by Granite Oni. Followed by Treacherous Ape. Who's considered to have the lowest? Uh, Blue Go. You served your purpose. You saved, you saved the dreamer. How many cards do you need under the dreamer? Eight. We need eight cards. We have two, there are three projections in play. So I could utilize gene bound shackles to great effectiveness, but I'd also have to hit the dreamer one more time. Basto goes after the lowest HP. That's almost always going to be the Dreamer, so I have to make sure the Dreamer... Like, I have to destroy the Treacherous Ape, for sure. Uh, and the Treacherous Ape is actually going to do a lot of damage, so I do want to be able to destroy him. And in order to destroy him, <laughs> I need to use Lightning Slash. Unless I want Chrono Ranger to destroy him. But Chrono Ranger is going to take t three damage from the Treacherous Ape. Which is problematic, so... This is an annoying waste of a card, but Lightning Slash on the Treacherous Ape. And we're gonna lose a card. Uh, let's lose the Gene Bound Shackles. No, I don't need the Masada anymore. What if the Dark Hero returns? Yeah, I'll lose the Gene Bound Shackles. I guess I could have hit the Granite Oni for more with them, though. I could do two damage to them. Yeah, actually, I do want the Gene Bound Shackles. Because <laughs> Tempest is going to be very effective at taking out the Granite Onis. So let's lose the Masada, because we don't need damage reduction anymore. So sorry, Dreamer. But we'll heal you up somehow. Yes, you are highest. <laughs> ah, reclaim from the deep. Just imagine if we were playing Challenge Dreamer or Challenge Cosmic Omnitron rules with Dreamer, where H is doubled and you need 16 <laughs> cards under the dream. Are there even 16 projections? I don't even know. How many. I guess the better question is how many non-projection cards are there? There's two one-shots, two one-shots, and three one-shots. So there's seven. There are 18 cards in your deck. So yeah, we would be able to win <laughs> with two times each times uh, two projections under her. Uh, I can't get my bounty back, so I have to... Don't joke about that. Oh, and she would also deal each hero target two times H minus two psychic damage at the end of her turn and plays the top two times H minus two cards. Yes. Coordinated Assault would take out a Granite Oni. Um, I was going to flip Guys' presence on this turn, but now 
I still sort of feel like... Okay, one granite Oni is dying to coordinated assault. That's the good news. How am I gonna kill the other granite Oni? Is the other is the sorry, is the current question. Impossible to win with H equals five. Yes, you need twenty projections, and there are only eighteen in her deck. <laughs> Unless we can, like, get a hero that says, put a card underneath any other card of your choosing. <sighs> yeah, I am joking about Cosmotron, about Dreamer having Cosmotron rules. Ah, jeez. Because the best that Chrono Ranger can do is, like... Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, they do have damage reduction because of their own damage reduction. <laughs> Well, I don't like doing this, but let's eye on the prize to no effect to draw a card. We get Displaced Armory. Displaced Armory searches my deck or trash. <laughs> yes, that's useful. Oh, oh, no! Some of these cards are face down in your play area, ready to be flipped! Which ones? Only Santa knows, and Santa ain't telling! No shake in your presence! Do you want coal? Because that's how you're gonna get coal! Sorry, I had to do the, uh... I don't remember the name of the show, but I had to do that meme reference. Do you want coal? Because that's how you get coal. Like, the best I can do is one damage twice with Terrible Tech Strike to one of the Granite Onis, but then... Unless Guy somehow flips damage dealing cards on his turn... Granite Oni goes after the non-villain with the lowest, which is... Ugh, currently Chrono Ranger. I guess if... I do damage to Bosto, Bosto could be lowest. I need to make sure Dreamer stays lower than the granite oni so i don't want to hit the other granite oni currently is my current thought like i'm taking out one granite oni with coordinated assaults but bosto we want bosto to hit the dreamer so that dreamer doesn't deal damage for that to happen dreamer has to be the lowest hp she's at three granite oni's at four if i do any damage to granite oni but i can't kill granite oni then bosto hits B granite oni instead and dreamer deals damage and kills us so to that end, I should just not play cards, I think. I mean, I've already played a card, though, so I might as well put things out. I, I guess I'll put the compounded bow out, and let's see, is there... Like, we could get a temporal grenade, or a Masada, or Danny Boy, or a Toxin Dart Thrower, unless they're in my cards in front of me. I could just do my job and get lots of cards. Um, yeah, let's do that. So, I don't think we're going to get more than one otherworldly resilience out there. Um, I don't need three terrible tech strikes. And let's not do blackout because that will hit the dreamer. And I don't need more than one blatant reference, so we get an ultimate target, dead or alive, hunter and hunted, hunter and hunted. And let's go ahead and hit Bosto. We need to hit Bosto some amount for him to tie with Chrono Ranger. Granite Oni does two melee, so... I guess I'll just hit him one more time just to be safe. So we draw a bounty board. All right, so we got to, got to, got to, got to take the granite oni out. All right, we're halfway there. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, living on a break. Unique capabilities. That's not going to help me get Hippocratic Oath back.
All right, so I wanted to get Guys' super fantastic combo going. Which I guess I could, but I wanted to flip Guys' presence with, like, Guys the Barbarian in play. But what I could do... Super Ultra Kawaii, and then Guys the Barbarian at the end of his turn. And then Blatant Reference at the end of his turn. Or at the end of the next turn. And then he could deal damage to projections. Hopefully she'll play at least three of them, and then we could have guys basically get rid of all of them. Hopefully. <laughs> Unless Dreamer decides to play three one-shots, and then guys will be sad. So let's get Super Ultra out, and then I might as well put more presents under the tree. character. I was hoping to get... I can do that too. But let's get... Um... I don't want to do damage, so we'll do guys the Barbarian. Alright. Slamara! Ooh. <laughs> this is dangerous. Okay. Uh... No, Dreamer can't deal damage. Macabre Spectre. Grievous Hailstorm. Bounty Board. So has Basto already gone off? Dreamer can't deal damage, right? Yeah, all right, so I can safely like hit the Spectre. Okay, I was worried about the card coming out where the Sentinels Deal each non-hero target to psychic damage that would have ended the game. <laughs> Medico can deal damage to something. Nope, we don't have Hippocratic Oath, never mind. Um I can at least almost I can at least get rid of the Spectre and I can almost take out the Oni. And then guys please give me a character. And I can play a card. Um, I want to play a card. I want to play Retcon so I can draw a card, I think. Because I want to try to get the ability to flip Guys' presence. And I can at least use this to destroy Slamara, who almost destroyed the game. Draw. Look what I found. That's okay. Alright. Violent Nightmares, good. Very good. Very good. Lipicorn. Not actually so good, that's gonna stop guys from dealing damage, excellent. Uh, but we have three projections. Dreamer cannot deal damage. Thank goodness, that was gonna be five damage. Dark Hero, okay, that sort of stinks. Rosto's gone. Guys can't deal damage, so that's tragic. And that Treacherous Ape and Dark Hero combination is brutal. At least we still have Gene Bound Shackles. But that's th starting to turn into a Devil's Burg. <laughs> Alright, now what? Uh, okay. You two play them, take a card from their trash, put it on top of their deck, and give me a draw a card. Is that going to be useful? Uh, Chrono Ranger does not have drawing capability. Oh, guys, I was getting you set up, and now you can't deal damage, and this is <laughs> really tragic, especially since uh, Basto's gone. So now Dreamer is going to do a lot of damage on her turn, and I don't know that we have the means of dealing with that. Especially since Sentinels don't have damage dealing things right now, and Chrono Ranger could put by any means on something, I suppose. But Treacherous Ape is annoying. Alright, well, Squall will do 
two damage to Lipicorn, two damage to Dark Hero, one damage to Dreamer. And that's super scary. But how many, what can the environment do? Second lowest, second highest, second highest, each. But oh wait, the environment, we can always redirect it. Okay, never mind, we're fine. <laughs> there has to be a way we can win this game. So this is when uh, Dolphins Dive gets super strategic when we try to figure out how we can do this. Um, it's super risky to hit the Dreamer, but we can flip presents still, right? So, so like, uh, steal. Oh, I guess we can always redirect the environment damage. That's right. So I don't need to worry about the environment. Even if it wants to target the dreamer, we can redirect it. So the question becomes, who would be the better person to flip presents for? Tempest has cards that deal damage to everything, but they're always powers with the exception of Electrical Storm. So it's fine to flip Tempest's presence, right? Nothing from Tempest can accidentally hit the Dreamer. I guess Into the Stratosphere could hit the Dreamer, but it hits the villain target with the highest. So it's at least unlikely that Dreamer would be the highest at one HP. And even if she is the highest at one HP, uh, <laughs> Unless there were no other projection in play, we could choose some other target. But everything else... Lightning Slash is forced damage. Chain Lightning's first damage is forced. Worst comes to worst, we can just in-cap Tempest, though. If there's, like, absolutely no other target to hit. Go for the whole gang again, so one kill nets two projections. Do we, we did get the whole gang back in our hand. Okay. So, and we do, have, oh no, we don't have Masada anymore. But whole gang, and by any means on Treacherous Ape, would kill Treacherous Ape with Compounded Bow. And that would kill something. We could use it to kill, like, the Dark Hero. And then, yeah, so then we don't even need to flip presents. Hey, Migrant P, what did you miss? The first match uh, was a victory against La Capitan with three heroes. The second match was a viewer's choice match, and the viewers, so kindly, from the top of their hearts, gave me Ultimate Iron Legacy in Rook City, and I lost, unfortunately. It was a not very close match at all. Third match was an entirely randomized vengeance match, and it was a challenge match, and I won pretty easily. And then the fourth match was a mix-up uh, where the chat chose the heroes, uh, I chose the villain, and Randomizer chose the environment. And that's the match that we're currently playing. And we're actually pretty close to winning, as dire as it might look. Uh, so let's see, the current plan then. So I'm going to use Squall. Because uh, we don't have any other means of Tempest dealing damage. Squall with Genebound Shackles is going to hit Whippicorn for two. It's going to hit Dark Hero for two. It's going to hit the Dreamer for one, but the Dreamer will survive. And no one else has indiscriminate damage. So Chrono Ranger could get out a uh, whole gang and by any means on the treacherous ape with compounded bow, uh, he will be able to destroy the, the treacherous ape and he could then destroy dark hero that way. So we get two projections under the dreamer that leaves the granite oni or the whippicorn. Unfortunately, we don't have damage dealing potential with the sentinels uh, unless they draw a damage dealer via unique capabilities. Like, we have, you know, obviously Idealist's power, but that's only going to do two damage. That's not going to kill the Granite Oni or Whippicorn. So, guys who can't deal damage, despite having <laughs> these awesome things, um, like, if guys could deal damage right now, then this game would be very easy. I was very set up for him to dispatch with the projections, and then Whippicorn said no. So... 
But guys could still flip Tempest's presence or Chrono Ranger's presence or Sentinel's presence. Actually, Chrono Ranger's presence might be the safest because he always deals one damage. As long as it's a one shot. The worst is that we get a Hunter and Hunted, a No Executions, a Neurotoxin Dart Thrower, a Danny Boy. Those are the only non damaging ones. He has five. He has six in front of him. <laughs> so that so there's only four cards in his deck that don't deal damage, and the other ones do at least one. And it's never indiscriminate. So the Whippercorn's gonna be down to five. So I guess the issue is if Somehow Chrono Ranger doesn't do that. Tempest has a lot of cards that could deal damage, but they're all could, except for one-shots. Well, the one-shots deal damage, except for like Aquatic Correspondence. Sentinels only have two presents, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would probably consider the Sentinels. Like, if I get a Sentinel Tactics and a Durasteel Chains, that's going to be tragic. Yeah, so I don't think it matters here, does it? I'll just put otherworldly resilience out, and I'll do this. Dreamer will survive. <laughs> Dreamer's at one hit point. That's exactly what she needs. And then Dark Hero, yes. And then the order doesn't matter. Flash Flood. All right. <laughs> Do you want to play a card, guys? Do you want to play a card when you can't deal damage? Is there anything I can copy that would be remotely useful? I could copy like otherworldly resilience, but it's going to get destroyed. So no. I guess it's, I should have made sure Chrono Ranger survived that, but he did. He's at one hit point. He survives. Oh, actually, let's see. Oh, this might be even better if I do it this way. Whole gang. No, that's not gonna be better. Whole gang on Treacherous Ape. I was thinking of Terrible Tech Strike, but it's only going to do one damage, the Treacherous Ape. If I put Ultimate Target on the Treacherous Ape... That would be effective if I could damage something else. But ultimate target on Treacherous Ape, I get to use a power on Sentinel's turn and on uh, Guise's turn. Unfortunately, I can't damage anything because all of my damages are one. But if I leave ultimate target in play, like I was going to put by any means, but if I put ultimate target on the ape, I destroy the ape, ultimate target stays in play. So if I flip Chrono Ranger's presence and I get a uh, hunter and hunted, I'm good. I'm golden. Hunter and Hunted with 1 HP is a really good play, by the way. <laughs> uh, Treacherous Ape? Yeah, Compounded Bow is always going to destroy the ape, as long as I increase damage dealt to the ape. Put it on the Dreamer. We're not trying to... <laughs> we're trying to win the game before the Dreamer's next turn. Um, fire. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I like uh, I could. I don't have a massive need to destroy all of these projections. I just need to destroy three of them, but I don't have to. Um, but I don't want to risk getting to another dreamer turn. Oh yeah, you're destroying something. Well, at this point, I can't really use Jim's hat. It's all a blur to you. I just need to destroy one more projection, and we're good. Um... All right, so maybe we'll get lucky with this. Uh, let's let's do Dura Steel Chains in case I get a damage dealer. Nope. I have two Restorative Bursts and a second chance. Restorative Burst would at least let us heal. That's good. Your internet connection is too slow to see anything but blobs of color. All right, so here's the situation currently. The Dreamer is at one hit point. She has seven cards underneath her. We have a Granite Oni with two hit points and a Whipicorn with five. And uh, guys can't deal damage. Sentinels can only deal two points of damage right now, uh, which I am gonna do. Sentinels draw a human shield. Guys still can't... You can play a card, but he can't deal damage, so it's not really, like, worth it. There's nothing he can really do. Um... I sound lovely, though. I hope I'm not, like, super robotic and kept coming in and out and stuff. Yeah, there's no... Oh, I guess I could copy uh, Otherworldly Resilience. <laughs> In case guy survives. I could gimmick a character, I suppose. Discard cards, regain HP, play a card. Yeah, so maybe we could potentially get... We discarded a dark hero and Grum. Grum! Grum was very strong, yes. And Grum was tough as well. La Capitan's crew couldn't even slow its charge, but the worst part was the constant yelling! Grum! Yeah, Tempest's cards don't do indiscriminate damage. Um, except for Electrical Storm, but if we're not making it to the Dreamer's next turn anyway, that's okay. Uh, Crown Ranger also doesn't do indiscriminate damage, but I'm planning on flipping his cards. There's a high chance that he'll be able to deal the damage we need him to do. So that's good. Um, so yeah, I am totally Tempest. Yeah, I'm I'm this strange alien. I could now deal each non-hero target two cold damage, but I can't deal damage. So here we go, Chrono Ranger. It's your show. Play it wisely. Sudden contract. No executions was the only one. <laughs> um. Oh geez, no. <laughs> That's not a good one. <laughs> I don't want that one. Uh, Cause that's not gonna put it under the dreamer. Or I guess if I put it on the dreamer first, then no executions can't act, right? Or no, wouldn't would, would, it would be destroyed cause the dreamer's text is, uh, whenever, where is it? Whenever a protection card is destroyed. Yeah, so <laughs> no executions is actually really bad. <laughs> Uh, but we were planning on hitting the Whippicorn, so that's okay. We'll just put that on Granite Oni and hit the Whippicorn. The next card is Eye on the Prize. Okay, good. Excellent. We're fine now because I can play a card that deals damage. Like Eye on the Prize. Although I don't need to do too much damage. Uh, so that's okay. Um... I just need to do one damage, so I do have to do damage somehow. I don't really care what it is, so we'll just displace an armory. And... search the deck? There are no equipment cards in the deck. Okay, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care right now. We have eight cards! We just have to survive through the environment turn. Narrow Toxin Dart Thrower. Displaced Armory. Now we know our deck's empty, so we're gonna search the trash. 
I guess we'll get Jim's hat back. Yay! And do no damage to the Oni. Danny boy. Just doing my job. <laughs> Skip. No cards were discarded, no, car no cards were drawn. All right. Here we go. Environment plays Frazit. Deals the non-environment target with the second lowest HP three energy damage when this card is destroyed. So, good news is, Granite Oni can be targeted by this. He would be destroyed, but instead he's going to the bottom of the deck. And now not only are eight projections under the Dreamer, but uh, there are no projections in play. So she's not spared any daydreams when she wakes up. So that was, <laughs> that took me a while to work out. I should have played that last round faster, but I was super worried about certain things. I was trying to see if there was a way I could guarantee a win and not have to rely on flipping presents. <laughs> well played. I am happy that we had a well played game tonight. I feel like, you know, outside of the Iron Legacy game, those three games were pretty good. The Capitan game was more like good draws and plays versus like an actually good game I suppose because it was a really easy game we didn't see any crews until like turn four uh, the vengeance game was interesting but it was sort of pedestrian in my opinion it wasn't really exciting uh, or maybe it was I don't know I'm not one to judge but the dreamer game was intense uh, advanced dreamer always scares me especially once she flips and she deals a lot of indiscriminate damage alrighty well, my two-hour stream is now three hours long, so <laughs> we are done for tonight. So, uh, that's it. You just watched Handelabra Games, and particularly you watched Dolphins Dive, hosted by Lude Dolphin. You can follow Handelabra Games on Twitch and Twitter, and I don't have the speech open. Uh, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, I don't remember the other thing. There might be another thing. YouTube! Um, you can also follow me on Twitch at Lou Dolphin, on Twitter at Lou Dolphin 21, on YouTube if you search for Lou Dolphin, that's probably the easiest. Um, I don't generally stream Sentinels of the Multiverse, but I do record weekly one-shot videos uh, at some point during the week, and I upload those to YouTube. So if you like watching mints, I get lots of mints. So you can watch some exciting mint gameplay. You can also watch me fail terribly some of the one shots. Uh, you know, they'd be a lot easier if John wouldn't just freaking uh, put the worst possible seed for each game and make it so you can't deal damage until the fifth turn. You have to play the exact sequence of cards to win. Jeez. <sighs> I'm kidding, of course. If you can't read the sarcasm in my voice, I was being sarcastic. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this stream and I hope you catch... Uh, uh, another lit down stream on Saturday with uh, Tales from the Archive, and that you catch Sentinels Live as always on Tuesdays with Jeremy and John and select other peoples. Um, but that's it. So I'm gonna take us back to some music. We started with Silver Gulch. Uh, let's go to the Temple of Zhulong. It's one of my favorite tracks. But good night, everyone.